marvelous God mighty one restore the fire upon our altars for the sake of that which you are doing in this season restore indeed there is a voice that says restore 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 fire restore graces restore restore hunger restore spiritual appetites in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus listen in this place this moment you are immersed in the glory of god even the glory that excels the glory that makes the glory that imparts the glory that transforms and it is because the maker is making you there is something that the maker is producing out of your life producing out of your destiny there are mantles there are graces there are unctions there are assignments there are burdens in the spirit waiting for men who can stretch until they sustain the capacity and some of you whilst you are listening the holy ghost himself is going to be moving across this place doing what you saw in your dreams doing what you saw in your visions doing what was said when you were born that they said there was a call upon your life doing what the preacher said would happen to you doing what the fathers in the land have told you god is doing i came to stand in partnership with the servants of god the veterans of the gospel even over this region to help lift up the name of jesus and to help birth this revival that we have so spoken about and so father for this end we pray for this purpose and to this end grant us grace tonight outside of your mercy and outside of your grace there is absolutely nothing we can do we obtain grace as we open the hallowed bread we break that bread we pray that you grant us illumination let the book be opened let the bread be broken in the name of jesus christ amen and amen please be seated for a few minutes we're only here for a few minutes tonight as the lord will grant us grace We're going to start tonight with the book of Ephesians. Um, my, the burden that the Lord put in my heart for this conference this year and for this region is to help provide spiritual strength and capacity for the body of Christ. And it's important for us to know how men become powerful and mighty in this kingdom. There is a lot to be done for the kingdom and for his glory but it will take a people of power a people of capacity and stature to be able to birth that which god intends to be done even in this time let's start with proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. are we going to have it projected let me just use my bible proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10 please turn your bible to proverbs 24 and verse 10 i'd like us to read together i'll be reading from king james if you have king james especially i'd like you to join me as we read proverbs 24 and verse 10 please let's minimize distractions and pay attention the lord is speaking now proverbs 24 and verse 10 if you have if you have it let's read together one to read 
it says if thou faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small one more time if thou fail in the day of adversity thy strength is small the reason why everything works scientifically is because there is a source of power that powers every gadget if i go to your house and your homes right now i would find your television working i would find your fridge working please pay attention i will find your electronic gadgets your laptops your ipads they are able to work not only because they were effectively programmed to work but that behind those gadgets there is a connection to a source of power is that true yes when the power holding company for any reason are unable to supply power even if you have a fridge that is healthy it will not seem to work is that true even if you have a television that is healthy it may not seem to work when something stops working in your life usually the first place you check is the power source is it still connected to power you have to verify first that it is still connected to power then you may now assume that there may be some fault electronic fault and all of that but the first place you go to is the place where it is connected to power hallelujah yes so the bible says if you faint the first information from this scripture look at me please is that there is such a time in the life of a man there is such a time in the life of a people called the day of adversity it's in your bible that there is something called the day of adversity the day of adversity is not for troublemakers the day of adversity is not for rebels it is part and parcel of the system of earth there is such a day called the day of adversity and the bible says what you need to survive those times and to survive those days is strength more than wisdom more than revelation you need strength that if you faint in this day whatever that day is we know that that day will stretch you so the bible says if you faint in this day called the day of adversity it says your strength is small hallelujah there are many believers today who do not have the power to continue the power to remain and the power to thrive it's easy to start your christian experience loving the lord rejoicing with the joy of salvation bubbling in victory happy and proud of your newfound faith but as you sojourn in this kingdom and as you face the vicissitudes of life it will take strength it will take stamina it will take capacity in the spirit for you to be able to run number two there are certain levels of spiritual warfare and territorial dominion that requires power and strength in the spirit you will never be able to exert dominion over a territory over systems and structures if your spiritual capacity is small many people do not have the spiritual capacity to be trusted with superior levels of anointings and mantles over nations over systems not because you are a, you are not a christian you may be a well-meaning christian but it takes more than professing your faith in jesus to sustain this capacity every time we talk about revival 
every time we talk about the move of god every time we talk about what god is doing within a territory the strength to dislodge principalities and powers the strength to dislodge powers that have held destinies down the strength to dislodge spirits that fight the purposes of god within a territory i hope you realize that every territory has controlling powers mandated by darkness to fight everything god they fight civilization they fight prosperity they fight the advancement of the church they fight the excelling of the saints in light they fight the men and the women of god domiciled within that territory they fight favor they fight acceleration they fight membership they fight advancement they fight longevity it says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves it takes more than a good government for a territory to excel and be able to capture and represent the purposes of god it takes more it takes more than good leaders to be able to have a territory reflect the glory of god it takes more than being a good man of god to be able to have a such an outpouring of salvation healings believers who submit themselves week in week out to endure sound doctrine thereby becoming matured you may have heard me say it that every territory is at the mercy of three things number one the knowledge of the true god number two the presence of teaching priests number three laws that control the morality of that territory the bible says in that time israel did not know the one true god and did not have a teaching priest and did not have laws when these three things are absent in any territory there is trouble when there is no knowledge of the one true god john chapter 17 when you read from verse 3 it says and this is life eternal that they may know you the one true god and jesus christ your son this is life eternal that they may know you the one true god are we together now so the land of enugu the region of the east of the niger your excelling among other factors is principally pay attention principally dependent on number one the knowledge of the one true god why because there are many gods that claim to be god almighty the knowledge of the one true god number two the presence of teaching priests teaching priests men and women who have through the sacrifice of alignment mentorship and stay with the holy spirit have sustained capacity to understand scripture the doctrine of scripture that makes for the maturity of the saints and now are loving patient and benevolent enough to communicate the same to the saints the level of the spiritual enlightenment of an average believer in a territory is a reflection of the spiritual strength and enlightenment of the voices the spiritual voices within that territory so if you find out that a territory is bankrupt of doctrine the average believer has not attained stature and maturity we the men of god within that territory are to blame because everybody almost everybody goes to church on sunday and we go to church every other day that means if we keep submitting ourselves under teaching priests and we do not see the result of stature and maturity through doctrine the content of those sermons are faulty are we blessed yes when a student submits himself or herself under a medical professor or a medical lecturer you will want to begin to see the signs of the formation of a doctor he has not graduated yet but you know 
he's in 300 level 400 level he should not the terms of medicine should not be strange again he should not see a cadaver and run away that is proof that it is a doctor who is training him or a professor in medicine who is training him if the student sits under a carpenter and wants to achieve medicine after two three years you will still see the signs of medical amateurity immaturity and amateurisms this is the challenge largely with the body of christ so we submit to churches denominations which are and, and that is profitable but after an appreciable time period when you handpick believers you do not find the requisite level of maturity that justifies the time spent under a teaching priest a believer who spends four five six years in church should be able to give us a sound doctrinal explanation of the ministry of prayer who is the holy ghost what is prayer how do believers attain character and maturity in the spirit what are the foundational doctrines of scripture how can i grow in the spirit i've not come to criticize i've not come to be sarcastic but i have come to challenge us if i ask any five believers right now to come out and i line them here and let's begin to interview them reference from the doctrine of scripture you will be surprised and even embarrassed at the level of spiritual ignorance that will be in those believers i'm talking of committed church workers the problem is not zeal the problem is that there is something wrong with the content of our sermons the name given to the course curriculum that builds and matures believers is called doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a preset body of truth already programmed to make you become something specific hallelujah but that's not really where i'm going tonight we're discussing the subject of strength if you are looking for a title tonight maybe let's let's give the conference a title so that we can have it arranged ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 that's where we're going to get our title if it is possible say by tomorrow if the media team can help us so that okay beautiful we have this now god bless you i was about to say that that if they can help us so that it can help to save time media projection helps a lot to conserve time it's not to make you ignore your bible it's just to help redeem time are we together ready to read ephesians chapter 6 now look up please keep that scripture there theologically speaking this was paul in ephesus and he began to help mature the believers it was part of his apostolic ministry to travel from region to region and supervise the spiritual growth in partnership with the holy spirit to see how far the believers were faring and if he detected that there were gaps in their spiritual growth he would organize a conference and bring balance to those areas so you notice that he did not go with preset sermons he looked at the needs of the territory and created sermons out of those needs that is a true representation of a, an apostolic grace and so if you went to corinth he saw that there was such an outpouring of the holy spirit but there was carelessness there was lawlessness people were taking some of those wine and they were getting tipsy there was misbehavior people would just get up and prophesy anyhow and he said no 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 he called a conference he said there are things i need to explain to you to the end that all things be done decently and in order that's what brought the book of corinthians first and second corinthians are we together when we get to the uh um what do we call it now ephesians he met the church in ephesus and these were people who were not ignorant people at all and then he began to teach them when you read chapter one two three four he began to teach them what we call their positional advantage the realities that have come to the believer on account of his being grafted through christ 
through this mystery of the new birth he began to help them understand the implication of being recipients of the life of god how that christ was raised up and then that we have together with him been raised and made to sit far above thrones dominions and so on and so forth then he now began to teach believers their work of faith the character and the attributes that justifies being a recipient of this life he's saying that if you are truly a recipient of eternal life there are implications to it we should see it in your lifestyle the manifestation of character that reflects christ in reality and then he now teaches them the subject of warfare and he helps them understand that ladies and gentlemen in as much as you are christians there is the revelation of your positional advantage there is your work of faith but you need to know how to stand and defend yourself and here's how he puts it 6 verse 10 finally now i'm concluding my conference he says my brethren he was speaking to a people who had been used to listening to him they had submitted themselves for mentorship and growth and development my brethren and then he says and this is where we get our title for this conference be strong in the lord be strong in the lord he says and then in the power of his might just keep that scripture we're only considering verse 10 for tonight the instruction is be strong in the lord you can call tonight part one be strong in the lord part one he's teaching them how to be strong is there a possibility of getting amplified can we project amplified otherwise i can i can easily search for that from my 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 um i wish we can get the amplified expression of this to project it be strong in the lord let me just look let me just bring it here because my teaching will require ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 amplified says in conclusion by the way i don't know if it's too early to do this and please do not find it offensive let me encourage every church and every man of god here in as much as we desire and those who all who are part of the media team of every ministry it is very easy to be able to get the tools to help your preacher preach well are we together don't be offended but it's to encourage you there are softwares and they are most of them are absolutely free all you need to do is encourage your media team to just meet a few people who have gotten the job well done you can send one of the people for training this is why we love the body of christ there are people who are excellent as far as media presentation is concerned you can send one of your people to go there and just learn you can see something as simple as having an amplified rendition you see it makes teaching very effective and it, it doesn't really cost money it's just honor to those that god has already helped so that you can bring them so i think i challenge everyone here who is part of the media of any ministry don't sit down and limit the capacity of that ministry because of pride or it must be through us open up your heart just one 10 15 minutes training and a software is given the same laptop the same gadget and you can now have very superior projections so i expect the media team those who are part of this please after service this night take it as an assignment go and look for the software there are individuals seated here some of you are exceptional some of you while sitting here in 10 minutes you can get this job done so please look for those people humble yourself and let them help you i am i am part of you this is family discussion so don't feel embarrassed are we together so that we continue to upgrade on the level of excellence let's not keep praying and falling down and then misrepresenting the the excellence that this region is known for 
we can be able to step up so whoever heads the media and some of you who are here if you can help listen to me whether you are in the committee or not after the grace if you can help please walk up to reverend dan they will lead you to the media people just help them let's set this up so that we can have this it will beautify the house it will help in efficiency of teaching and it will ultimately glorify the name of the lord if you're in agreement with me say amen, amen. right generally speaking is a lesson i want you to learn anything you do not know don't be ashamed of outsourcing it don't wait until it comes to meet you just humble yourself most of the things we need for the next level they don't need money they only need honor just acknowledge that i may not know this and you can go and learn from a pastor from a church and many people who know are open to teach but not everybody they teach people who are ready to learn are we together so let's get back to our discussion ephesians chapter 3 let me read from amplified here here's what it says in conclusion be strong in the lord draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him that was what i wanted you all to see this is how amplified puts it be strong in the lord draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might he says so the bible tells us that we can draw strength from our union with the lord the bible says we can be strong in the lord a believer can build capacity and become strong in the lord you can be strong in and through your human connection when you see a politician that is well connected you can say this man is a strong man oh, what you mean is that he has derived some level of stability by reason of his connection to humans and the bible says here that believers can be men of stature and capacity in the spirit and that the basis of that strength is their union with the lord are we blessed it is true that we can find strength the strength to do greater things the strength to walk in more superior spiritual dimensions the strength to be able to host heavier dimensions of god's glory god's mantle god's power but it is important for us to know how we obtain strength in this kingdom so if a gentleman gets born again that gentleman is now in christ but he must learn the spiritual dynamics of sustaining strength in the spirit so that after four or five years when you see that individual you can see stamina you can see stability when you give birth to a baby please look up many of you here are mothers when you give birth to a baby the reason why the baby is not able to walk and run and handle certain things is lack of strength is that true it would be unfair to ask a baby to lift this pulpit why the baby does not have the strength to do it even if you want to give that baby this the baby does not have the strength to do it no matter how wealthy you are even if you're a billionaire you cannot give a baby or a small child a truck or a luxurious bus and hand the key he does not even have the strength to maneuver the steering hallelujah are we together now strength there are certain levels of kingdom responsibility listen carefully there are certain prophetic responsibilities that are supposed to be carried out by you in destiny but the reason why those seasons have not been open for you yet is because you do not have the strength there are certain levels of anointings that are supposed to have come upon you but god himself is withholding them why because the attacks that follow those anointings you don't have the strength to survive the attack so out of god's love he will withdraw it from you while you are praying and fasting and say more power god says no it is not more power you need it is more strength and stamina can you survive the attack because there are attacks that follow mantles not individuals if you carry elijah's mantle jezebel will follow you if you carry samson's mantle delilah will follow you 
Delilah does not follow Samson. She follows whoever carries that mantle. So it's not enough to just desire membership. I want 1,000 members, 10,000 members. Do you understand the adversity that comes with that level of unction? Apostle, I want to be a billionaire. And I went to bed and I saw that I'm a billionaire blessing people. Do you know what it takes? The criticism that comes with having that level of wealth and the discipline remaining morally pure with that level of resource. Do you know what it takes? Many people are praying for what they do not have the spiritual capacity to receive most times it's not that your prayer is not answered is that where the answer should come to is too small are we are we together tonight be strong in the lord apostle i want to receive an anointing and a grace for nations do you have the ability to remain healthy and strong as you travel from region to region preaching the gospel god will not give you an anointing for nations to preach only three times a year you are joking not for that kind of anointing do you have the stamina to preach from conference to conference and yet not fall down and collapse it takes more than physical energy there is an energizing that is mysterious from heaven it's called the spirit of might Is someone learning please so the challenge many times is not that God does not want to release these levels of power and these levels of grace and these levels of prosperity and it's not that what you are looking for is not in your destiny it is true that you are a prophet it is true that you are an apostle but for a long time the experiences that follow that office will never follow you and I'm giving you the diagnosis tonight apostle why have i been praying and it looks like god cannot trust me with this if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small god has weighed you and found out that only 300 members can survive this level of capacity you have if god should multiply that result by two it will destroy you you do not have the spiritual capacity to remain humble to remain diligent to remain disciplined to remain spiritual and you do not have the spiritual capacity to ward off the arsenals of darkness within your territory because i tell you every time you rise in the spirit it's not only angels that see you demons to see you and they say who is this rising in enugu follow this young boy let's not take him for granted uh, why is he praying every night he does not have a church yet he does not have a name yet but his consistency is sending a, a there is something why is this lady always interceding we that's how we took esther for granted until she became queen who is this lady that would not give up being consistent help your wife there is a grace that is coming on that woman of god in the name of jesus christ say grace new wine new wine coming to her new wine by the spirit of the living god hear me there are many of you as it is now the reason why god has refused to announce you is not because he does not want you to rise you do not know the arsenals of darkness waiting they have been suspecting that the the end time general will come from inugu but where is he and god hid you and said keep praying keep serving in the ushering department keep serving in the ushering department and yet your pride wants you to hold the mic help that lady please keep serving keep serving and god is saying i am hiding you because you do not yet have the strength that being exposed requires
man of god there is a reason why god has hidden you he's hiding you because oh moses if pharaoh knows you are the one they are killing children for they will kill you in egypt before you become strong you have not yet met the god of the bible who will give you strength so he will hide you he will hide you using service in the house of god you are called a prophet but god will say walk in the media for five years and while you are feeling insulted you do not know that it's god hiding you an heir as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all an heir a man of god a prophet an apostle a businessman now hear me i want to give you a word of caution before we continue this is the reason why premature manifestation is dangerous because when god hides you so that pharaoh does not see you pride will make you believe i am too much for what god is saying i should do i can even preach more than the man of god who is preaching i have while he's preaching i'm seeing visions why should i be cleaning chairs and you graduate yourself from the place of service to pride and expose yourself and in one year you go out of relevance this is a danger people start ministry and in two years three years the devil leaves them and they think they are all right by the fourth year an attack comes and just sweeps them like a tornado because the training that provides capacity to last they did not stay with god can i tell you this dear co-laborers in the gospel let us learn a lesson don't ordain and anoint people just because they are diligent and their gifts are working find out from god do they have capacity to endure what they will be exposed to don't expose people just because they are loyal to you don't expose them just because they can preach i know he can preach let him keep cleaning the chairs god is hiding him look up please many of you here watch football there are footballers that when you are saving them for the final match because that that club site or that nation must win even though they are professionals you find out that the last two or three matches before the final match they will keep them in the reserve they will be itching to play but they are hiding them you know why because the coach knows that if anything should happen to this player before the final match could that be why god is still hiding you because there is a battle coming hey matter last said could that be why god has stopped you from going on air could that be why god has said sit down just submit to authority and learn pray in the spirit for one minute the entrance of your word give it light and even understanding to the simple hallelujah please be seated please be seated even prophet samuel was about to miss it when he saw eliab he said surely the lord's anointed and God says, hey, stop that. That's not how I operate. Apostle, why should I not make the young man a pastor? He's sharp. He's intelligent. He's obedient. He prays every time you call for prayer. I think he's ready for ministry. Let me send him to go and start the other branch. And the Holy Ghost says, not so. Don't do that. He's saying, this young man you see, comes from a family with spirits that destroy people when they rise and he has not yet sustained the spiritual intelligence just because the devil has not attacked him yet is because those spirits are activated the code of operation for those altars is that until you get to a certain level of height if you have not gotten there they will be silent for 20 years you will think you are free 
you keep rising there is a level you get to here they come they brought your father down they brought your mother down so before you get there god has come oh samuel you will be a great prophet but let eli teach you something there is something eli has to teach you show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to walk in the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest hear me when god begins to hide you even when you think you are qualified i'm explaining to you what is happening in the spirit it is true that you can preach it is true that you can prophesy but you do not yet know how the devil throws down great men so god is saying so that you will not become a bad testimony let me hide you until you attend this conference when you now know what it takes to survive i will lift you sometimes even overnight are we learning hmm. everybody say strength shout it say strength capacity do you know what it means to remain prayerful when you have ministrations every day do you know what it means to prepare for an average of three to five sermons per week and yet your spiritual life must remain alive and yet you must still manage family faithfully and yet you must manage your congregation faithfully everybody says strength do you know what it means to be praying for it, the sick here somebody has died in your church another person has gone through a tragedy and everybody saying are you sure that this man is not using people for something and yet you still have the stamina to call upon the name of the lord say strength the man of god shared with you how that he was doing ministry for 13 years no fruit of the womb and yet serving god faithfully let me tell you it takes more than a healthy psychology you need strength from the spirit especially when you are praying for others and they are getting that result do you still have the power to go to god in prayer and yet the discussion is not your need the discussion is lord your kingdom your kingdom come and you act as if you have no need everybody says strength let me show you a mystery tonight and then we'll pray isaiah chapter 40 we're discussing the subject of strength i want to show you a mystery how men contact strength and ascendance in the spirit if you find and you learn this secret believe me you will continue to rise in power in power isaiah chapter 40 hmm. more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life that must be your prayer in this conference i want more love more power more of you in my life not just more members not just more fame more love more power more of you in my 
ไหลสตรีทสตามินาคัพเซติไอซายาฟอร์ตีฟรอมวัสทวินตี้เอทไอซายาฟอร์ตีฟอร์ซีโรวัสทวินตี้เอทอีเซส Hast thou not heard? Hast thou not known? The everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, He fainted not, neither is He weary. There is no such in of His understanding. So He is giving you an information. In case you have not heard it, He is saying there is a God who does not faint. He is not weary. So we are about to study by what technology has he provided that the the saints just like him can remain strong and not be weary. He's saying God does not have the possibility of weakness and fainting, and there is an understanding that sponsors that result. Next verse, he says, "He giveth power." What does he give those who faint? He does not give them an advice. He does not give them an information. When you find your fridge vibrating and it looks like it's shaking and making noise, you know that the current, the voltage, is low. Is that true? And many times you may need to outsource power and switch on the gen, and you find out everything is wrong. There are symptoms of lack of strength in the spirit. I will show you. You can know. That your strength is depleting. There are indices, like a patient. There are symptoms of malaria. There are symptoms of typhoid fever. You can know there are spiritual symptoms that show that strength is failing you. The Bible says, in any case, God can give power to the faint and to them that have no might. What does He do? He increases strength. Someone say, "Increase my strength." Prophesy. Say, "Lord, increase my strength." Pela katos kate branda kata badiata. To those who have no might, to preachers who have no might, to businessmen who have no might, He can increase your strength. Next verse, thirty. It says, "Even the youth." Now, this is a very serious information. Don't forget what we are discussing. To be strong in the Lord, it says, even the youth shall faint. So fainting and weakness has nothing to do with backsliding. It is part of the human nature. And if you do not sustain the spiritual technology to remain strong, you may not backslide, but you will still lose strength, and you will not be able to do so much. That no matter who you are. No matter how much you love God, the tendency for weakness, the vicissitudes of life, can beat you as a preacher, can beat you as a businessman, can beat you as a prophet, and bring you to a point where even like Elijah and even like Jonah, you can ask for death. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. Now he begins to introduce us to a formula. Thirty-one, but they that wait upon the Lord. So if you will be strong in the Lord, you have to learn to wait upon the Lord. Don't assume you know what I'm talking about. They that wait upon the Lord, your assignment. When you are weak, your assignment when you see that you do not have capacity for the next level is not to continue. God is saying, if you ever find out that you have, you, it looks like you don't have sermons again. It looks like you, you all your prayer, the miracles are recycled, nothing new. He's saying, stop, 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 stop every other thing you are doing is a sign that your strength is limited. They that wait upon the Lord, whatever this means, the reward for doing it is number one. 
you shall renew your strength number three that you will mount up with wings as the eagles and by this technology you will run and when men are weary you will not be weary you will walk and yet not faint so when you are still going after 20 years 30 years in ministry 35 years in ministry 40 years and people say by what technology do you continue you will tell them i learned something about the human nature that all men can be weak all men can be weary all men can faint but if i master the art of waiting you will never see an equation of fainting in my life it does not mean i cannot faint it means every time that season is coming i know how to jump it by the mystery of waiting finally brethren be strong in the lord draw your strength when yours is weak draw your strength from your union with him hmm. so the bible gives us waiting as a secret but what is the implication of waiting because for many of us we think waiting is fasting when you are fasting you say i am waiting upon the lord fasting is part of the activities that might be captured in waiting but what exactly does it mean to wait upon the lord everybody say waiting <laughs> i love the bible the wisdom that comes from this truth is able to change the bible says the law of the lord is perfect reviving the soul for you to understand what it means to wait upon the lord there is one spiritual law that i want to teach you it is called the law of submission listen let me show you what it means to wait upon the lord when you wait upon a man how many of you have gone to restaurants where you find a group of well-dressed gentlemen many times with white and black is that true and you see them stand there is a name they are called what are they called waiters thank you what is their assignment in that restaurant not only to serve you are we together now but to ensure that you feel special that you feel honored so they are trained and they have built stamina to wait now let me tell you what a waiter does he stands and remains at the door or at his assigned table and the business people can come and sit down and sometimes for 30 minutes they are talking and he would dare not ask them any question can i begin to say oh, no 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 we're busy and he keeps quiet and he stands there we call him a waiter because he is able to stay sometimes they are engrossed in the discussion and for one hour that man is staying there later on you now call him and the business people will not even apologize for keeping him to stay that long they will now say what do you have and after waiting for so long they'll say the only thing i need go and get me a drink i stayed for one hour not to push a tray bringing sumptuous food to bring you a drink and they bring it with joy and drop it and they wait for another one hour and when the people are done drinking sometimes they will stand up and look at that waiter and say you've tried and they can reach through their pocket and jesus said who taught you this where did you learn this For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Ah. So what is the key to having soldiers under you? You come under authority also. 
you want to tell one go and he goes you want to tell one come and he comes the key is that you must be under authority and on the strength of that authority is a spiritual law the law of submission is the law of strength is the law of capacity you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself it takes another to bring honor upon you let's learn i am a man under authority he says having soldiers under me and by reason of that authority i now have the power to say to one go and he must go i can say to another come so the power to say go and the power to say come the power to say go demons the power to say come blessings is hidden in authority i can tell you why the demons don't go when you tell them go i can tell you why the blessings don't come when you tell them come before they obey you they verify there is a verification system in the spirit please pay attention make sure you understand what i'm teaching you give me that scripture again please i say unto this man go and he goeth to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it verse 10 when jesus had it what happened to jesus he marveled the bible did not say he listened he was listening to this man sharing a deep spiritual law he marveled and he said unto him unto them that followed verily verily i say unto you i have not found this kind of faith in the whole of israel i have searched for men but i don't know what this man found but indeed he has found something and when you read that same hour jesus did not even have to pray again the man's understanding was enough faith to get his child back the law of submission it says submit yourself to god hold on <laughs> submitting yourself to god is not giving your life to him uh -uh. Uh -uh. just because you gave your life to jesus does not mean you have submitted to him this is why many christians keep quoting scriptures in the name of jesus christ i am in christ in the name of jesus christ i am the head and not the tail and demons say you have broken the law we do not see submission jesus i know he was under authority paul i know he was under authority but who are you you don't have an identity in the spirit listen every time warriors were about to speak in the bible they will say this person the son of this the son of this when david wanted to fight goliath there was only one question king saul asked him whose son are you i want to know what authority and what covenant operates under that authority then i can verify whether you can bring goliath down he didn't say who trained you he didn't say how long have you killed anything before whose son are you when david stood before goliath goliath said you must be stupid for bringing this small boy to come and fight me am i a dog and david said goliath you come to me with your bow you come to me with your sphere but i want you to look well in the realm of the spirit i am under authority you are in trouble i come in the name of the lord you see the name again the name Hmm. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. You come to me with your bows you come to me with your spheres you come to me with your size goliath i confess i will be stupid in my own strength to come and stand before you i'm a teenager but i'm not a baby i 
i'm wise enough to know that physical strength for physical strength i cannot match you my assignment is to forerun the authority i represent and shift and allow you collide with the power of that authority now please look up remember what you are dealing with be strong in the lord part one i'm showing you how it means or what it means to be strong in the spirit that the more your authority in the spirit your submission to the authority of the lord jesus christ is in place the more you sustain the power to reflect him look up how many of you know that the moon does not have light of its own do you know that is that true but why does the moon shine so bright i will tell you the degree to which the moon aligns to the glory of the sun in the night you don't see the sun but the sun is there the sun steps back and allows you to appreciate the moon the report card of the moon's alignment is revealed in the night you don't know whether the moon is well aligned in the day in the night when there is darkness the moon now reveals whether it used the day to align well there are times that the moon aligns so well you will even mistaken the moon for sun in the night so when you look at a man and the man looks like god where did he get this kind of power you speak and it happens like god the man does not have power it is because he submitted so diligently to this authority you will almost mistaken him for god Is it not in your bible where they saw paul and barnabas they said you are not human beings they call them zeus and hermes what kind of authority is this and they tore their clothes they said we are men it is just the god that we are submitted to so therefore when you find out that there is a limiting increase in membership there is a limit in the dispensing of the miraculous there is a limit in your access to power in the spirit it is a report card it means your submission needs to be increased the more there are times that you look at the sun the moon and you think the moon is only half the moon is always full but it is the part of it that aligns to the sun that is the part that shines any part of the moon that does not align with the sun it does not shine so all the various shapes of the moon we have they are not the true shape of the moon they are simply the shape of the alignment of the moon not the moon look up please every shape of the moon you have today the various shapes as slim as it can be as midway it can be that is a false shape of the moon it is the disalignment of the moon that kept creating all those variations could it be that most of the error the imbalances that come from the church they are not a true reflection of the holy ghost they are a reflection of the degree to which we aligned or otherwise so if i preach correctly and then i start preaching another thing it does not mean the holy ghost who is speaking to me is wrong but like the moon somewhere there is fault in my submission i'm praying tonight that you will understand what i'm saying and you will command power in this kingdom that will marvel you when you see men and women who are powerful my brothers and my sisters it's not like they went and found a bottle of oil somewhere and just put it on their head and became powerful no let me show you what it means to submit hmm. submission to god is more than just acknowledging that there is god luke chapter 22 let's start from verse 40 luke chapter 22 from verse 40 jesus our pattern man 
is about to reveal for us what it means the hallmark of submission and when the hour was come he sat down luke 22 verse 40 40 40 40 luke 22 verse 40 40 and when he was at the place look up please everybody he said unto them pray that ye enter not into temptation verse 41 and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and he knelt down and prayed what was the content of his prayer saying abba my source my sustainer my defender my authority i need power to be able to endure what i'm going through now it says if you are willing remove this cup from me this is my desire i don't want to have to go through the cross i've gone through enough shame i've gone through enough ridicule i've gone through enough embarrassment if it is left for me as a prayer request remove this cup from me this is the language of submission nevertheless not my will but thine be done nevertheless not my will but thine be done keep that scripture there please look at it very well ladies and gentlemen this sentence you see is what has been responsible for the superior strength of many people you admire today in the kingdom and lack of adherence to this law is responsible for the weakness and the fatality and a coronation service was held in honor of him because every time you hand over your will to god you may go down but you will still go back up notice the life of jesus is a lesson for us the bible says when jesus gave up his will the first place he went was down <laughs> you think that just because you give god your will when you say your will be done suddenly power comes you start going abroad it is costly to say your will be done because many times in the interim your life may seem to go down your will be gone your will be done and god says for the next one year you are not going for any ministration again stay with me and you say god but the nations are just beginning to hear my voice he says you have a choice i gave you a free will you can use it and then you come back and say lord i confess that i love to preach the word but i love you more thy will be done lord left for me i will not be so stupid as to empty my account and give any church i have sense it took me five years to gather that money lord you gave me a brain and i've been using it very well i know what it means to save but i cannot pretend that it's not your voice i'm hearing therefore nevertheless thy will be done hmm. let me tell you this the hardest experience that you will ever have in your christian life is not persecution no the hardest experience you will ever have in ministry is not being misunderstood it's not um, all these things that no the hardest experience is the experience of laying down your will that is the real thing god is looking for you can lay down your offering you can lay down your reputation your will represents the epicenter of your relevance god says that's what i'm looking for your will your will represents your future your ability to make decisions outside of him you lay it on that altar and say lord i know you are sending me to be a man of god to the nations 
I am tired of demons, principalities and powers fighting Enugu state, destroying destinies. We keep organizing prayer conferences after prayer conference. We only fall down, we stand up, but nothing happens in the territory. Demons still move as if they are not aware that there are preachers in a land. I tell you what the demons are looking at. Before they obey you, like the sun and the moon, they check. I say, don't mind him. Let them keep organizing their conferences. But when they find a people, the moment they see you go down on your knees, they say, what is happening? Pay attention. Who is that? What is he doing? And you place that wheel and say, Lord, it is what you want, not just what I want. And while you are doing it, the devil and even preachers will make you look stupid and say, God gave you brain. My friend, take wise decisions. And he said, Lord, I have a choice, but I've taken that power to choose. And I laid it down. What do you want for my life? And the realm of the spirit will salute you and say, who is this one walking in wisdom? You have mastered the key to accessing power. In that state of submission, God will say, now that you have bowed down to me, arise and go to a Nugu state. Go and tell them there is a God who can heal. Go and tell them there is a God who can deliver. Go and tell them there is a God who can save. Yes, Lord. You organize a crusade and just when they thought it was the same Moses who left Egypt, they do not know that this one has met the God of the Bible. And you stand and say in the name of Jesus and the register is checked. Demons see it. And in the name of Jesus, you begin to see miracles. You will shift the climate of a territory single-handedly. Where did you come from? I came from a place of authority and strength to submission. And just when men are celebrating you and saying you are the next voice we're celebrating, God can tell you in the middle of a powerful crusade, with honorariums waiting for you he says for the next three weeks let no man see your face i need to spend time with you at that point your fame versus your obedience and the devil says are you going to allow your fame to go to the ground like this man of god just when they are producing your pictures on posters is this how you want to disgrace yourself you have a choice remember jesus nevertheless and you go back to that secret place and god will tell you compared to where i'm taking you to we just started the grace i gave you was a test to see if in the presence of fame you will still return back and you can return back and say lord they may call me their man of god but i am still your boy your authority is still where i am and he says let's go the flight for the next dimension and you keep seeing these people open up layers and levels of glory the secret is submission so when the bible says they that wait upon the lord he does not just mean they that fast he does not just mean they that pray fasting and prayer are only tools that help to engender your submission if at the end of that fasting and that prayer you are still full of yourself lord your colleague in ministry is here i just wanted to tap a little power so that i go and continue my thing god will say nonsense finish your fast and go and eat and continue your cycle of frustration in ministry hear me i just shared with you the life of this man standing before you the secret to all that you see all that you hear is not in any power that is derived in myself per se the signs and wonders the word of god the honor that he is given access to kings and systems and structures i can tell you the secret the secret is submit yourself before the authority of God there is absolutely nothing 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 I cannot give up when God speaks if the Lord asked me to drop this mic after this conference now and says there is no morning session tomorrow 
there is no evening session i will turn and apologize to everybody here and say i'm sorry please don't mistake it for pride but the master the one whose authority empowers what i'm doing has sent me every time you go to pharaoh pharaoh will not say welcome he will say who sent you you must tell pharaoh who sent you he's not going to allow israel go like that who sent you finally brethren be strong in the lord finally preacher be strong in the lord finally prophet be strong in the lord there are still heights to scale there are still mountains to climb there are still marvelous things to do for the kingdom but you are weak be strong in the lord draw your strength from your submission man of god at this level of ministry is already killing you the financial burden the ministerial burden the diagnosis is that you aligned a little now go back and align properly and like the eagles you will rise and begin to command power with god where you will speak and what you say comes to pass you don't just speak because you are confessing you don't just say in jesus name may the power of god taught you no god is not a genie that you use to conjure like a magician can i tell you this there are certain things that happen in this kingdom not because of power there are things that happen in this kingdom because of your positional advantage where you are located spiritually can birth possibilities more than just power there are things that happen and it is not a product of just power it is a product of the alignment that you have as far as god is concerned so every time the lord brings me into a new season as i fast as i pray as i study scripture i don't just ask and say god give me more power sometimes honestly i could pray that but the real prayer is father i know that for as long as i am alive in myself they will not see you for as long as i am alive in myself they will not see you but for as long as i die to self through my submission to you they will continue to see you rise and the key is i if i be lifted up from the earth that earth is you if i be exalted i will draw all men to myself john chapter 3 and verse 30 john chapter 3 and verse 30 marvelous god everybody please read one two read he must increase but i must decrease decrease does not mean be irrelevant decrease does not mean get out of relevance no he must increase it's another word for saying be magnified i must decrease means may they not see me when they see you <laughs> when they see me may they see you exalted lifted may they not just see joshua selman i was born by a woman who my mother is still alive i still have pictures of when i was small don't be deceived by the man he must increase he must increase be lifted high be lifted high oh lord be lifted high for you are holy 
righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, be Be magnified. I submit to your authority. So if I come for a meeting like this, I don't come and dance into that vain pressure of trying to show I am anointed. No! I am here as one under authority. Lord, what would you have to be done in the meeting? If the Lord says, just preach, share the grace and drop the mic. No matter how much you have clapped for me to see signs and wonders, I will preach, drop the mic and go back and return. I am more conscious of my submission than my reputation. This is the secret to spiritual power. Many people have organized meetings that was not under authority. They organized meetings because others were doing it. And they said, let us also build a city and make a name for ourselves. And they did not have the backing that will follow it. We hear that they are building branches. Let's build branches too. And God says, but I did not direct you when i sent you he says lackest thou anything can i tell you this you are not an authentic christian just because you gave your life to jesus you have to get to a point in your life where you submit your will it's all about you jesus all this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are god and i surrender it's all about you Jesus and all this is for you it's for your glory and your faith it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone at God a man who truly submits does not have plan B there is no in case it fails we die here there is no i am trying you let me see but there's one leg in and one leg out in case you disappoint me no <laughs> no 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 i show you the secret to power many of you have plan b there is a habali somewhere let's try jesus if you fail i will still be coming to church politicians you are a politician here pay attention this is why many people do not secure the power of god they submit to god and submit to something else when you submit to him for supplies in reality your eye is looking at one billionaire uncle so on one hand you are saying lord you are the only provider but somewhere you are eyeing the uncle so when we say in the name of jesus may god favor you you are saying amen with respect to the rich man you know and god says you are not ready for my power take it higher from me ladies and gentlemen i have learned this with god I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you this I have no agenda looking for anything for myself everything you see today I travel left right and center for months I have been back to back with meetings with no time to rest why do I do this fame no there are easier ways to look for fame we are here for you come and do what you do 
we are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts on you so you will do what you do we need a moon we need a moon I am here for you come and do what you do I am here for you come and do what you do set my heart on you so you will do what you do we need a move we need a move and who said hear me it is not because the charms and the native doctors are so powerful it's not because the covenants are hundreds of years old that families cannot be liberated it is not because god is so powerless that in spite of church services i show you why many are unable to dislodge the altars that have kept men down there is a problem with our submission we are only using ministry as a tool to do whatever we want to do and so we just quickly run to god with the show of spirituality but then our hearts are on ourselves our businesses our education the bible says proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him acknowledge him means admit that without him you can do nothing he says it is the abiding principle i'll teach you that tomorrow please don't miss any of the sessions he that abides in me and i in him it tells you the same will be a fruit hear me men of god business people many of you have come for this conference expecting encounters many of you have come for an upgrade in power and grace it will not just happen by impartation you have been preaching from your manual and your intelligence now submit to the wisdom of the rabbi and watch what begins to come out from him you want the anointing it's not because a man of god stretched his hand and you do say no it's not by copying it's by submission but i assure you even tonight that if you are willing to submit do you know what it means to submit to take away all that agenda and say lord whatever you say is final whatever you say is final i love what you love i hate what you hate my entire life revolves around your will you have signed in for strength and for power I, 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 you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace prayer point number one lord i lay aside everything i lay it down go ahead and pray i lay down my pride i lay down my ambition i lay down ministry i lay down the quest for anointing is someone ready to surrender everything nevertheless oh god not my will nevertheless oh god not my will to build an empire not my will to do ministry 
your will be done what you want is what i want what you want is what i want what you want is what i want regardless how i feel i trust you what you want is what i want go ahead and pray please pray please pray please pray thy will be done in my life 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 your 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 will be done you are praying you are praying i lay down everything oh god everything i hold back nothing from you Hello, him out of night, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him out of night, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, him out of night, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hallelujah. It's a prayer that I want you to take back home. It's not a prayer that ends here. It's a prayer that you take back to your place of prayer. Father, I submit to your authority that everything you would have me do is what I will do. I resist the pressure that comes from men. I resist the pressure that comes to prove a point. I am more interested in my submission to you, my relationship with you, than ambition, than a name, than an agenda. Let men call me a failure if my submission is intact, if my relationship is intact, I am satisfied. Hallelujah. Listen. I assure you that there are men and women that God is seeking. There is a build up to this glorious revival that has been prophesied even over this land. I have been saying this for many years that a mighty revival is coming to the east of the Niger. I believe that God has not been sending me for nothing. I have come like Elijah. I have come like John the Baptist to announce again but it is not enough to know that a revival is coming bishop has been echoing this and he has said that it is in his lifetime he will see this move of god but hear me one man's carelessness of disalignment can prolong the move of god the nation of israel were supposed to only spend 400 years but the delay in moses training added 30 extra years So you are going to leave tonight i'm praying for you but tomorrow 
we return here listen i like you to see today and tomorrow like a retreat don't just go and start gisting and acting no no spiritualize your mentality that from here tonight you go back home and you listen to this message again go online and look for it listen to it once or twice and sit down in prayer lord i'm part of this army this battle acts that you are using lord do not pass my family by do not pass me by i am ready and i am willing if you are looking for men of stamina in this end time lord find an available vessel i am willing to submit i throw every agenda and everything that is antichrist and i submit to you and i pray for you the grace that i'm about to pray upon you as we wrap up tonight is the grace for the secret place is the grace for hunger is a grace that sustains the power to bury ambition the grace that can throw away ambition and say lord if you want me to serve at the altar like mordecai at the gates i will stay there with honor i'm not looking for anything except jesus revealed and jesus glorified yes i will be glorified while i do that but take the stage lord have your way i'm just a vessel nothing more when you're done please take the glory and satisfy just to see you glorify satisfy just to see you glorify I'm satisfied just to see you glorify in the name of Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God father I pray over your precious people here gathered following online this grace that plans hunger this grace that plans passion for god passion to submit to his authority more than the empire building of men the desire to see jesus glorified more than the desire for fame the grace that decreases the flesh and increases the christ may that grace rest upon you now some of you as a result of this impartation after this conference is done that's when you will start your own retreat with god three days two days of crying before god and say take everything oh god i pray for you everything that has enthroned that is enthroned in your heart above christ we dethrone it right now every idol of ministry idol of pride idol of lust idol of self-glorification idol of competition idol to be noticed above the revelation of jesus we dethrone those idols now in the name of jesus and i pray for you by reason of tonight's teaching may you gain power with god for many of you as a result of this commitment tonight you will go for your meetings and you will begin to see a new level of oil a new level of grace a new level of authority in the name of jesus christ for like the centurion you have made up your mind tonight to be consciously aligned under the authority of the christ to wait upon him that you only do what he says to do you only go where he says to go you only say what he says to say 
i pray for you in the name of jesus step into new levels of signs and wonders every mountain my friend oh dear we don't have the time i'm aware that you have your bikes are limited so we're going to be leaving now but we'll take our time to minister to people from the morning i will use both the morning and the evening to minister to people but this gentleman i want to pray for you just right where you are standing i saw oil coming on your head in the name of jesus christ may that grace rest upon you now let the fire from heaven rest upon you take that fire now in the name of jesus please help him you will drink of that wine and you will never thirst again the lord will begin to show you strange things in the name of jesus christ drink of that oil by the power that raised christ from the dead you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ and every mountain that has stood before you as a roadblock and will not let you pass you have used your faith to fight it and yet that mountain will not be lifted in the name of jesus i come by the apostolic and the prophetic tonight just help them i'm praying i'm rounding up now mountains have been lifted now my god i'm just seeing doors opening this is what i'm seeing Paris kete Paris kodia just help them Kerusa zia kete kodia skata just one minute to minister to these people Shadide kete ya everyone here that a door should have opened and that door has refused to open I'm praying now ke Paris kete de de yata Shkadile kebe ya Shkodo brekia doors and gates doors and gates I come by the authority of heaven doors and gates ke pe dosh ke de re kete ala hasha Branda Gadaskida, doors of testimonies, doors of testimonies. Kebe Janias Katabrende Gedialata, be open now. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open now. With understanding, you order the seasons, creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing my friend that gentleman wearing a brown waistcoat lift your hands up fire from heaven is coming upon you your life is about to change take that fire right now you will never be the same in the name of jesus power from heaven I'm seeing you step into a level of speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is up. Let me pray the last prayer. Please do not miss tomorrow, whether the morning or the evening session. Do not miss it because I'm going to be praying for the sick and I'm going to be ministering to people. But I must pray and encircle some patterns of delay and also to release the grace for speed. Honestly, there is such a grace help those who begin to run by the anointing um whether you are an usher or not help them this is usually what happens when we pray this grace for speed father there are men and there are women here that desire this grace you have brought them to bring acceleration to their lives right now in the name of jesus at the count of three may that grace for speed rest upon your life one my goodness two three take that grace take that grace speed to your life in the name of jesus christ people will begin to run by the anointing help them speed to ministry speed to life speed to your destiny in the name of jesus take that grace some of you your family as a whole family step into speed step into speed step into speed as a family you are representing your families altars of delay i crush them now receive speed altars of delay i partake it up there are pastors here i'm seeing the anointing around the minister stand take that grace for speed take that grace help them please take that grace for speed 
Help the ministers, please. Help them, help them. Take that grace for speed. We are still praying. There are ladies here. They have been delaying your destiny. I stretch my hands. Where are they? The grace for speed. Take it right now. Take it right now. Take it right now. Speed in destiny. There are gentlemen here. By now, you would have been 10 times better. But altars have trapped you. I declare, take that grace for speed. 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 The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your hair will haze your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, that's our desire tonight. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name will haze your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Help us tonight. Open our hearts and give us understanding. In Jesus' name I pray please be seated god bless you blessed be the name of the lord be strong in the lord we have been dealing with the subject of spiritual strength authority and even capacity in the spirit that as a people we need strength we need capacity in the spirit to be able to do that which we need to do for the kingdom we require strength the bible says if you faint in the day of battle it says your strength is small and so we have been considering the spiritual factors that are responsible for enlarging our strength and authority and stature even in the spirit and number one we looked at the law of submission that one of the ways we derive power and strength in this kingdom is our ability to submit to christ to submit to the government of heaven and that the hallmark of our submission is when we are able to say nevertheless not my will but thy will be done i'm doing this recap because it's important that we all be on the same page that if you want power with God, dominion and strength, capacity and stature, it will be on account of your submission. You want the authority and the ability to resist the devil so that he will flee. The Bible says, submit yourself. It says, before the Lord, under the mighty hand of the Lord. And then from that posture of submission, you can resist the devil and he will will 
flee praise the name of the lord the law of submission everyone say the law of submission rebellion against christ and his government will lead to weakness in the spirit we are never able to do much for the kingdom when our strength is small you want authority over demons you want to speak and that there be a performance to your words it will be at the instance of your submission remember yesterday we considered the story of the centurion when jesus came and he beckoned on jesus to come and heal his son here's what the bible says jesus said you are an honorable man i will come to your house but he said no for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me also and by reason of my authority i can say to one go and he will go i can say to one come and he will come i can say to one do this and he will do it he said jesus i know that you too you are under authority because this kind of power as a man cannot just be because you are the word you are under the authority of the government of heaven therefore speak only there is a government that backs you and jesus said who taught you this i have not found this faith no not in israel that means every time you say the word only and nothing happens it might be a question of a verification exercise that you are not done submitting in truth to the authority of christ and i did tell us that submission to authority does not just mean acknowledging that there is a government higher than you is more than that the language of those who have totally surrendered is nevertheless not my will but yours be done never forget this nevertheless i showed us yesterday that in gethsemane the first time recorded in the bible where the father and the son had different wills until then they have been a united force everything the father wants to do is what the son wants to do is what the spirit wants to do but in gethsemane for the first time the father wanted the sacrifice but the son wanted a possibility of renegotiating salvation he says if it be thy will let this cup pass but nevertheless not my will but yours be done authority in this kingdom is derived from our submission to christ and to his government the bible calls him the head of all principalities and powers the head of them and then this morning we consider the second key the law of encounter very very important the bible says but the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits we examine scripture after scripture seeing the power of encounters that encounters produce and create conviction and that an encounter is a platform for exchange where you exchange your weakness for his strength we looked at the life of jacob for instance and then we consider john 4 the story of the woman at the well she came and met jesus she started with him being a stranger and eventually her perception continued to change until we get to a point where jesus said i that speak unto you i am he he revealed himself to that woman immediately the bible says she left her water pot that's what happens when jesus reveal yourself himself to you she left her business she left her ambition and ran to the city and said come see a man who have told me everything i have done the people did not come because they knew jesus they came because they honored the testimony of the woman but when they met jesus for themselves their testimony is now we believe not just because of you we have heard him we have seen him for ourselves encounters are powerful they supply the ability and the stamina to stay the ability to remain is based on encounters he says what then shall separate us from the love of god and he begins to list several things that sustain the ability to separate men from the love of god is it famine 
is it persecution and he says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors we must have encounters to last in ministry we must have encounters to remain in the kingdom that in the midst of all the activities of man we must stand firm on the things that we believe and it is encounters that make this possible i did tell us in the morning that anything you are not proud to communicate and live by it is because you have not had the encounter most people are still ashamed of jesus ashamed of the gospel ashamed of standing for jesus why because you are not yet sure you you still suspect that loving jesus translates into a failed life and so you are trying to protect your success by managing this idea of being public about jesus he says if you deny me before men i would deny you before my father are we together and we took our time to pray and just allow the holy spirit breathe on us as we made commitments to surrender to love him and to want him more than church more than religion more than ambition to love him with everything that we have are you ready for the last key for tonight please pay attention to this key it will help you be strong in the lord Ephesians says chapter 6 and verse 10 remember that's what we are considering how to draw strength amplified says derive your strength from your union with him let's celebrate our media i think they have done an amazing job from yesterday is this the best you can do this is beautiful this is excellent presentation hallelujah in conclusion he says be strong in the lord he says be empowered to your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides be strong in the lord if you are not able to do much within your territory is because of strength remember i told us yesterday if an electronic gadget begins to shake and it's not working well say for instance a freezer a deep freezer or a fridge you notice when the voltage is low or when there is no power it begins to shake what you need to do is to increase the capacity the voltage and you find stability instability spiritually can be traced to lack of strength vacillations today i believe this tomorrow i do not believe this can be traced to lack of strength the third key very quickly so that we pray that controls finding strength with god strength to do much for the kingdom strength to move the kingdom forward strength to ward off the gates of hell is called the force of unity the force of unity genesis 11 verse 6 please listen very very carefully tonight show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest genesis 11 and verse 6 behold i show you a mystery and the lord said this was the building of the tower of babel that city of rebellion the zenith of the pride of men outside of the government of the christ nimrod the son of cush he says go to come let us make bricks and mortar let us build for ourselves a city whose tower will reach the heavens and the goal is to make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered from the earth the bible says that the lord said behold the people is one this is the problem now he's identifying the issue 
the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do in that state of oneness now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do i hope you know as at the time this is the only story we see where satan was not mentioned the holy spirit was not mentioned and yet the word impossible was also mentioned no assistance of the holy ghost here no manifestation of any demon here just the force of unity and god himself is testifying these people do not acknowledge my government they are in rebellion to me and yet because they are one and they have one language this they begin to do when god tells you nothing you have to understand who is talking here if he's a prophet says nothing you say he's seen in part if he's some priest who says nothing you say maybe he's backsliding this testimony is coming from the lips of god almighty that there is a certain condition on earth that man can rise to that nothing absolutely nothing please keep that scripture there nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do mm. nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do are we still together ephesians chapter 4 please from verse 1 to 6 ephesians 4 from verse 1 to 6 paul again is teaching the church in ephesus and let's pay attention to what paul is trying to discuss here i therefore paul the prisoner of our lord beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation wherein ye are called verse 2 it says with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love uh-huh we're reading to verse 6 it says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body everybody say one body please shout it and you say one body it says there is one spirit say one spirit it says even as ye are called in one hope of your calling verse 5 one lord one faith one baptism one lord not two one faith not two one baptism the last verse it says one god and father of how many please talk to me god is the lord and father of how many not certain people one lord or god and father of all who is above all and through all i love paul i love paul this man this man that encounter of falling down under that light that thing entered him you can see the results the the kind of light that took that man from his donkey and dropped him it 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 re, it gave him a, a reorientation the depth of revelation that came from that encounter is what is producing this kind of mystery one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in how many of us that father is in how many of us mm. write this down unity is a state of oneness unity is a state of togetherness please write it down unity is a state of oneness unity is a state of togetherness to be united therefore means to be in agreement write it down please to be united means to be in agreement number one 
to be united means to be of the same motivation and to have the same expectation to be united means to have the same motivation the same thing driving you the same thing driving me and it also means to have the same end the same expectation the same goal that's what it means to be united this is very powerful the subject of unity is one that we will continue to preach until we see the body of christ come into that state of unity because the bible says part of the reason why the lord gave the fivefold is for the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry is that true until we come to a state in the spirit called the unity of the faith unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ he says and so we have an understanding from scripture that there is a level of strength and stamina and capacity that a corporate people can never have until they are one from genesis 11 and ephesians chapter 4 the bible showed us the power of unity to be of one motivation to be in agreement i'm going to share with you let's read four scriptures further to show us the value of unity and the force of unity as far as building strength the strength of a people in fact politically or i think sociologically we have a cliche that we have used it says united we stand do you know that united we stand but divided we fall that saying is true because it is consistent with what the bible says first corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 please make sure you write let's do a few studies from scripture just an exhortation to cap this up and then we pray first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 help us media so that we'll just rush the next scripture will be romans 14 and verse 19 first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 it says now i beseech you brethren he's speaking to brethren those who are of the family of faith by the name of our lord jesus christ that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no division among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment this is paul admonishing the church in corinth very powerful scripture he says that there should be no division among you at all you should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment romans 14 and verse 19 the third scripture will be philippians 2 and verse 2 romans 14 and verse 19 it says let us therefore are we still together enugu let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another are you seeing this now i hope you understand what he's saying here that you pursue after the things that make for peace in other words stay away from the things that cause trouble and cause division follow after the things that make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another this is a very instructive scripture that means before you do what you do find out how many people will be hurt and destroyed by this my ideology how many people will be is the body of christ going to benefit from this action is this action going to bring glory to the name of the lord and then will the church suffer or will the church survive even if my denomination or my fellowship or my group benefits from it will the larger body of christ suffer or benefit scripture number three philippians chapter two and verse two then the last scripture will look at the book of acts learning from the early church four and verse 32 philippians two and verse two says paul now fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love 
being of one accord of one mind you see it scattered through scripture paul keeps warning the church admonishing them beseeching them do not play with this issue of unity there are all kinds of enemies neighbors nations that are waiting to destroy you your strength is in your unity fulfill ye my joy he says that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord and of one mind the last scripture acts chapter 4 and verse 32 acts 4 and verse 32 it says and the multitude of them that believe were of one heart this is the early church now the model for us the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul watch this neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things in common this is the character of the early church this was how they were mentored by jesus directly they were mentored that it's not the issue of my thing the most important thing is let it benefit us my revelation my rema it came from me mm -mm. that everything that comes is for the supply of the body not just for the benefit of an individual are we learning something already very very important now let me show you a scripture while i was studying preparing for this this scripture it, it kept ringing in my spirit until i brought it and added it to this teaching <laughs> We're going to look at two accounts of it. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, we'll begin our reading from verse 22. Again, Jesus is teaching. Learn a mystery here. Please look up. Most times we have taught along these lines, but we have taken that teaching out of context. Let me put it in context now so we we'll understand what Jesus is saying. The scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, this was when he casted out the devil from a demoniac they said he had Beelzebub. now in ancient times there were all kinds of demon spirits that they believed controlled all different aspects apollyon leviathan abaddon all kinds of demon spirits and this he said is Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casted he out devils so they are questioning the source of his power and his authority to be able to cast out a demon like this 23 and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan that means there is a law that governs results how can satan cast out satan 24 now and if a kingdom be divided against itself what did he say that kingdom cannot that means the strength of that kingdom is not in the blocks that built it the strength of that kingdom how did jericho go down even though it was an advantage but there was an insider who cooperated with an outsider that helped to bring down jericho i hope you know that when the earth, there is no enemy within it is said the enemy without can do us no harm the most dangerous enemy is not the enemy without it is the enemy within are we learning something a kingdom divided against itself it says cannot stand next verse watch this and if a house be divided against itself that house also so this is a law that is applicable for the stability of kingdoms the stability of houses the stability of spiritual families the stability of a territory you are able to stand and withstand darkness to the degree that the force of unity is in place now here is the mystery 26 and if satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but hath an end an end comes to the reign and the dominion of that system 27 now you see where we keep making mistakes read this now in context 
no man can enter into a strong man's house stop <laughs> i love scripture you are intelligent people and you went to school with respect to what we have been discussing what made the man strong what made his house strong because the bible here is talking about unity and its ability to provide strength so this strong man you are calling is not a strong man because of physical might he is a strong man because there is a formidability in his house jesus is teaching about unity that any nation kingdom family house that is divided it has lost its strength now he's showing you in a parable no man can enter into a strong man's house so by the definition contextual definition no man can enter into the house of a man that is united and formidable that's what makes him a strong man are you getting it now and spoil his goods except the first condition if you want to destroy a strong man's house the first thing you look for is to bind please keep it keep it media to bind the strong man wow <laughs> when you read the bible apply some intelligence to it don't just read it it's spiritual how do you bind the strong man if you were satan god forbid and you wanted to bind the strong man from reading what i've told you how do you bind the strong man so you don't bind people by putting cords on their hands you bind them by destroying what made them strong this is your bible the first assignment is to look for a way of dismantling that cord of unity and the bible says if it happens although the man was once a strong man although the nation was once a strong nation although the territory was once a strong territory you have bound them my goodness my god although the church was a strong church although the ministry was a strong ministry the way you bind the strong is to disunite them and are we are we following now this is a very prophetic message not only to the church but to the territory no man whoever this man is we know he's a stranger and whoever this man is we know he's a thief because his assignment is to come and steal the spoil but the the man will sit down and say how do i penetrate these men are strong what makes them strong unity how do i penetrate this church this system this nation this family i must bind the strong man and how do i bind the strong man next verse well we can stop here the next he was talking about blasphemy because he was sad that they disbelieved him just keep it at 27 have you learned a lesson here we are going to look at the synoptic account of matthew same story but a different expression matthew chapter 12 now still from verse 22 i pray that god will open your eyes to see this i am showing you the force of unity that it sustains the ability to provide strength if the bible gives us an assignment and says be strong in the lord then we must know how to draw strength from our submission number one if there are people under the anointing just help them from our submission number one and then from our encounters but also from our unity watch this now then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil look at this kind of condition possessed with a devil blind and dumb and he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw it was a spectacular miracle and all the people were amazed and said is this not the son of david are you learning unity but when the pharisees had it they said this fellow does not cast out devils but by beelzebub the prince of the devils uh-huh and jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them every kingdom divided against itself 
is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand next verse if satan cast out satan he is divided against himself how then shall this kingdom stand this is a spiritual law it's not an opinion next verse if i by beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judge but if i cast out devils by the spirit of god then the kingdom of god is come unto you 29 or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house verse 30 he that is not with me is against me and he that gathered not with me scattered abroad are you seeing the power of unity many churches many individuals enugu as a city the east of the niger africa as a continent we have not been able to rise to a point of power and stature spiritually and otherwise because satan knowing this law has a singular assignment divide husband from wife divide children from parents and you have rendered them powerless let me give you a secret when jesus walked upon the earth as a man do you know that as a man he did not have strength do you know where his strength came from bible students <laughs> do you know where his strength came from let me tell you the day the strength of jesus started the day there was a united scenario of the father the son and the holy spirit at jordan the day the heavens opened the father spoke the holy ghost came the word was there that was when power started read your bible until that time there is no mention of invisibility and miracles provided that unity was not established john baptized the word the heavens were open the holy ghost came the father spoke and identified when that trinity that equation was complete no power in existence they tried to push jesus off a cliff he pushed them back they tried to kill him nothing happened now when jesus was about to die it was impossible for him to die because he had to be bound as a strong man how was he bound as a strong man the holy ghost had to leave him in gethsemane it's in your bible if the holy ghost did not leave jesus hitting nails on his hand would be a waste of time a kingdom that is not divided against itself cannot fall so when the father wanted redemption to happen watch this he said look for the first time the trinity will have to be separated so that jesus can become weak weak enough to die it's called the hidden wisdom of god this is what paul said if principalities knew they will know they are not the ones who defeated jesus that jesus himself came out of that alignment so that he can die are we blessed the moment the trinity was in place everywhere jesus went power how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god we see god we see holy ghost we see jesus the equation is complete that equation of unity was in place jesus himself said i can of my own in isolation to this united force i can do nothing hmm. so when god wants to help a man 
God picks that man and connects him to a larger body of graces for the purpose of unity and you will find out that the strength you did not have as an individual you can have as a corporate people watch this if you ask me to lift this up I'm an adult look how difficult it is to lift it up with one hand are you seeing that now but does this mean this cannot be lifted can it be lifted let me have two or three gentlemen if you are not strong don't come here not with the might of heaven alone but physically two or three gentlemen stand here stand here you stand here watch this hold it too are you ready now let's try it now what as anointed please drop it as anointed as i am this thing did not respect the fact that i was alone there are some things you cannot do alone here's how the bible puts it sit down sit down sit down it says it is not good for man to be alone he was not just talking about a wife he's saying it's a risk when you are the only one standing if you are not in a company of strong people there is a limitation as far as territorial dominion is concerned when he sent them do you know why jesus sent them two by two go and read your bible he never sent them one by one when the animals were coming to the ark of noah they came how many see this kingdom has mysteries and until god opens your eyes this is the assignment of the spirit of revelation that all men may see unity is not the issue of just agreeing it's a risk to be divided for 30 years Jesus kept moving as if he was a scam that he was a savior. Jesus would move. He had playmates. They would push him left, right, and center. Yet that was the logos of God. But the day the heavens were opened, the Father spoke, the Spirit came, Jesus received. When that trinity was in place, it was an invincible formation that could not be destroyed. Enugu, hear me, east of the Niger. The kind of revival that God wants to bring across your territory is a revival that no single church will be able to birth. No single man of God, no matter how anointed. Individually, there are things we can do, but there are certain prophetic things that will take a united people. If this is what is coming from heaven, and I stand with my pride to receive it it will break me down even though it is from God I will need other people to hold it so the prophet is holding it the evangelist is holding it too the businessman is also supporting it here as a prophet listen sit down sit down sit down sit down sit down as a prophet I can make a lot of noise I can prophesy is you know when there is a venue and there are people that I can pray according to genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2 even a prophet when there is no food he can die give us genesis 42 let me show you something here genesis 42 the force of unity never forget this message 42 from verse 1 and 2 please leave it now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt the prophet said to his sons why do ye look upon one another verse 2 he said behold i have heard that there is corn in egypt get you down tether and buy for us from there that we may live and not die so the man of god can be a man of god but if there is nobody to lift his hand in ministry you will live as if god did not call you you will suffer as if you are not anointed and yet the anointing is on you why because there are things you cannot do alone even jesus on his way to golgotha he became so weak he had to fall down it took another man to help him carry the cross so that he would arrive there he would have died on the ground 
if he died on the ground he would not be called a cause he had to hang on a tree to be called a cause everybody say unity do not forget united we stand but divided we fall so we are discussing how and what makes a man strong the bible gives us its definition of a strong man a strong man is not a macho man a strong man is not necessarily a wise man a strong man is a united people the bible calls a strong man a strong man is not an evil man necessarily we have a narrative every time we say strong man we think it's just a demon no in the bible here it is the outsider that is an evil man the strong man became strong because his house was kept in unity how did war happen in heaven well bible students have you studied how war happened in heaven satan decided to come and he began a proposition to one third of the angels according to the authority of scripture he began to sell and market an idea that we can run two parallel governments i can choose you can worship me or you can worship jehovah and there was war in heaven satan was casted to the earth when he got to the earth the bible says there was no place for him when god made man eve came out of man the garden of eden there was perfect unity when satan wanted to destroy man here's how he came he isolated the woman out of the man because she was supposed to walk under his authority and provided she was conscious of his authority satan could not penetrate them but he isolated the woman and said woman forget about your husband he may join you later on but what is the discussion what did god tell you people a wise woman would have said let me call my husband he will be the one to talk to you but she now took laws in her hands and satan said i found it by the time he was done with eve the glory had departed when i found this key in the spirit i knew that i was ready for an unbeatable life my unity with heaven number one i show you how you can have a formidable ministry how the east of the niger there is no charm and no power of darkness from hell that will just penetrate a family and be killing people like that believe me when i tell you there is someone in that family there is someone within that neighborhood who would have agreed with satan to say come the bible says jericho was such a formidable building nothing could go out nothing could come in but there was a woman called rahab she was a prostitute even though the narrative later profited the kingdom but the principle still remained the same for as long as there was nobody to attend to the nation of israel from inside even though they were a covenant people they were limited until they found access through that woman the man who was going to destroy the nation of israel was not outside israel it was her man and he lived with the king in the palace can i tell you her man's goal was not only to destroy israel it was to one day take the position of that king how do you know when the chronicles was opened and the king called him and said what should be done to this man immediately without thinking twice he said let the king give him his royal robe he thought he was the one let him ride upon his horse he said go and do it to mordecai and the king said wow her man said ah for mordecai i thought it was me he had been eyeing the throne it was only a matter of time now watch this there are certain levels of revival that if it is to come upon this land there are certain levels of superior end time mantles 
end time anointings no matter what the individual efforts of the churches the men of god the politicians the business people no matter what it is that formation of king priest prophet until that formation is reformed there is a level of god's glory that cannot be hosted the nation of israel always preserved this formation king priest prophet and it was an invincible formation and no arsenal of darkness could penetrate them but now what the devil has done to the church is that he has brought us to a point where even though we are well-meaning people our concern is just our personal projects it doesn't matter what happens to the body of christ once my church is being built i am okay it doesn't matter what happens whether the devil is killing and destroying people whether there is moral decadence in the land i don't care no matter what is happening in enugu is not my business provided nothing has come to my neighborhood i hear that a pastor lost his wife or lost his child or lost something that's his cup of tea after all we don't believe the same thing and while you are there you do not know oh esther that when mordecai is done with those outside the palace he's also going to come to those within the throne that was what mordecai warned esther he said don't think when haman is done with us you will be spared because you are also a jew are we together now one of the indices to measure the spiritual maturity of a territory is when believers ministers of the gospel men and women of god obtain grace from god to now begin to look beyond their personal progress beyond their personal progress to look at the advancement and the corporate growth of the body i know my church is going well my sons and daughters are doing well but is the body of christ in enugu state doing well is the body of christ within the east of the niger doing well if the body of christ is not doing well you must learn the art of carrying the burden and the pain of the body even if it does not affect you directly are we together you now see why i have profound respect for meetings like this where several men of god keep aside any denominational barrier keep aside who is a man of god a prophet and come together and say look this is about kingdom come this is about a revival upon the land don't you ever think satan loves what is happening now and he will do everything to fight it he will use offense he will use all sorts of things to fight the unity when a husband and a wife at home just when there is a prophetic word that god is opening a new season for that family watch how the devil comes suspicions attacks and all kinds of things a man who has loved his wife for many decades all of a sudden they start having irreconcilable differences and they don't know that there is a stranger joining their heads together beware when new seasons open for you because when new seasons open for you one of the ways that satan will seek to destroy those seasons is to bind the strong man to bind the strong man means to bring you to a point where you are disunited and when you are disunited listen carefully there is so much you cannot do you may be praying and falling down personally but you see the reason why we keep excelling as churches but the territory does not carry that signature of the power of god because we are still concerned with individual progress in every part of this nation and across africa there are churches being founded there are conferences happening there are conventions happening why is it then that the body of christ or the territory has not received that signature of the corporate move of god i will tell you why because sincerely speaking if we are to be honest with ourselves we are largely concerned about individual progress to what degree am i doing well any other person that fails that's his business let me just succeed 
Jesus rebuked the Pharisees because when for instance the woman who was bent over for 18 years was healed it was not the healing that was their business it was who did the healing who will take the credit for it and Jesus said look how depraved the heart of these people are and sadly speaking it's still the same experience today if a believer receives a breakthrough and the hand of God comes upon the person we are not just interested in the fact that God gave a visitation our interest is through whose hand did God do it we want to know so that we know who to give credit to are you learning something tonight the force of unity very quickly let me give you three keys that are responsible for activating the force of unity three keys ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 and then i give you three keys all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god ah. that's what that's what is important not joshua selman all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god souls are being saved in enugu the most important thing is that jesus is lifted It doesn't really matter which prophet God used, which apostle God used, was Jesus glorified, where souls saved, our destinies being transformed. Well done for all the vessels he used, but more than building personal empires. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 we have to pray two are better than one why because they have a good reward for their labor for if they fall then one will lift up his fellow are you seeing the power of unity it will be impossible for all of them to fall if one becomes weak spiritually if one is not doing well east of the niger look at me keep that scripture there do you know one of the reason why you have excelled financially in business it is this same principle so what happens is that i learned when a man becomes made by god and helped by god he is mandated to gather people around a community am i right on that i hope i'm being accurate on that and then he now gets a few boys and trains them is that true are you seeing the power now while he's training them sometimes he may not even be directly related to them but he trains them and then in no time they rise then they themselves get other people and train them it is the reason why there is widespread prosperity in the land now if only that one person says I will, nobody will rise what happens when he dies the territory returns back to square one is the reason why the departure of many people brings an end to certain things god is doing because they were not concerned about lifting and raising others back to that scripture please for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe unto him that is alone you see what i'm saying now woe unto him that is alone even when he's anointed when he falleth for he hath not another to help him up next verse again if two lie together then they have heat but how can one be warm alone unity are you learning now the last verse 
12 if one prevail against him two shall withstand him and a threefold cord hallelujah is not quickly or easily broken three keys to activate the force of unity beloved people of god co-laborers in the gospel politicians businessmen if you understand my sermon tonight if i drop the mic here my coming would have been a successful one because by the next time we'll see you will be flying on eagle's wings on the strength of unity are we together number one love john 13 35 the first key that controls the force of unity is love can i tell you this love is not just an emotional thing it's a product of a revelation when you love just emotionally your love will not last it will vacillate according to how you feel i feel nice about this man of god i feel nice about the east of the niger i feel nice about my pastor and the day you don't feel nice you don't love again love is more than a feeling it is a choice and a covenant the covenant of love is the ability to stay loving regardless of feeling if you love just based on emotions you are going to be in trouble emotions is largely a product of hormones we are talking of covenant god introduced covenants to manage man's vacillations because if it's just to leave man like that peter can say lord i love you today and by tomorrow he denies him the covenant john 13 35 are we learning something tonight by this shall all men know that in enugu i have disciples by this shall all men know that in the east of the niger god has men if ye have love not for me i'm not doubting your love for me but your love for one another can i tell you this hating yourself is a way is a dangerous way to live why should you have preachers who hate themselves why should you have family members there are some of you as family members you cannot look at yourself eyeball to eyeball do you know that do you know that there are family members who cannot look eyeball to eyeball and sometimes it may not be your fault just individuals who just get up and want to make things difficult and they divide the unity and the advancement of that family everybody shout love let the devil hear you love love you love your pastor just when he preaches a correct message that you like the day he lashes out the flesh you look at him this church is time to change church this man i'm not understanding him in this last one week and then after two years of rigma rolling around with confusion and pain and regrets and sad stories to tell god will say still go back there that was what happened between hagar and sarah abraham drove hagar but the truth is she wanted to leave too there's no record of her saying let me stay with speed she left when she met trouble in the wilderness god said go back to your mistress go and submit to her that is the key to your advancement that was how your blessing started foolish lot was also another example for us the first decision lot made outside of the influence of abraham took him to sodom every other decision he had made abraham had assisted him the first official decision outside of the partnership of abraham led him that means his prosperity was not his wisdom it was a product of a man who so loved him dearly can i tell you this you must make up your mind that the spirit of hatred bitter hatred pastors sitting among themselves and talking about other men of god tearing them down talking about members talking about denominations it is dangerous 
even if you pray in tongues afterwards it is still dangerous there must be genuineness of love please lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry to the god of heaven lord take away hatred bitterness from my life from any good state you are not just praying for yourself please pray in the name of jesus christ the spirit of hatred let it live my life forever i reject hatred not for my fellow brother not for my fellow sister not for a fellow servant of god i reject hatred not for my fellow family member my fellow business partner are you praying love number two in the name of jesus number two romans chapter 12 and verse 10 what is the second key that activates the force of unity in a church in a home in a territory it's called mutual honor mutual honor is the second key that binds a people and makes them united can i be honest with you romans chapter 12 and verse 10 a people will never be united when there is no mutual honor mutual honor means honor that is communicated and reciprocated not one-sided honor one-sided honor will never produce unity among a people you can't criticize me and insult me and call me stupid and say let's be one it won't work that way mutual honor be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and in honor preferring one another imagine with me for a moment that our father at his age came here on behalf of the eldership to introduce me and to open the gates for me all these great servants of god they came and they sat down and here comes this arrogant man all the way from abuja and he comes to mount the pulpit just because he calls himself apostle joshua selman and i insult every one of these fathers these veterans downplay everybody and then people are shouting under the anointing and i'm insulting everyone you will never invite me back to this city again i show you why for some of you certain altars shot towards you forever because the day you climb that altar you tore everybody including god the only person who was not torn by that talk is you and the eldership said mark this person package his honorarium and give him and never return him here again mutual honor you've heard my teachings on honor please listen to them i have taught extensively again on honor it is one of the greatest spiritual weapon i have learned second only to encounters honor the key to access any door that closes over you it is dishonor that closed it dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles are we learning now yes i watch this with shock how sincere ministers of the gospel sincere leaders in society continue to pay the price for violating honor it is the, the price of this honor is too costly it's not worth it are we together there are some of you here the reason why you may never have the opportunity to access the grace upon your pastors is because just because you saw them when they were starting ministry that sense of honor is not there most pastors is when they go outside of their churches you really see the grace that god gave them when they return back home ah this man is here okay let's listen lift up your hands for a blessing and they casually lift their hands and say look at the man they look at the cheap shoe and cheap watch is even wearing to prophesy and while you are saying that heaven is watching you 
and a stranger will come into the church with his heart open lord i don't know who this man is but i open my heart next sunday he's the only one who comes to testify is the reason why many workers in church don't receive miracles because they are familiar they've seen the man of god when he was on jeans when they were having leaders meeting they saw him when they even served food he was eating banana in their presence he had to uh, swallow everything and what is there is it not the same hand he even gave me some of it i'm not teaching human worship and let me also reciprocate one of the reasons respectfully speaking why many ministers of god have lost their partners and their helpers is because of dishonor even to members too members are also human beings just because they love and honor us as men of god does not mean we treat them like animals in the name of superiority members have a unique way of punishing you they will leave you in isolation they will leave you in pain financially and so on and so forth is the reason why a very wealthy man can leave his own church and go to another ministry and say any project that is happening please call me whereas in his own church less than one tenth of that amount he will only go to where he's honored not flattered honored he that honors me i will honor the bible says he that despises me i will lightly esteem are we together there are many young people who have dishonored their parents the bible says honor your father and your mother in the lord let, let me submit to you do you know why many young people in this nation it is not well with them it's not a cause they brought it upon themselves through dishonor there is such a mark that is like if it, this dishonor has become fashionable in our world today it's a trend many young people see some of our fathers some of you can see a father like our bishop now and just because you have your small anointing and your prayer group or your ministry if you have your way you can even push him if i'm on the street as joshua selman if i see our father and our mother the bishop carrying something on their head i stand before the god of heaven i will come down and help them or at least i will instruct someone to help them my biological parents as i am today if i ever see them lifting something and it's within my power to help them apostle nonsense i will throw it down and help them i want to live long this honor will kill you and cut short your life i'm telling you this many young people you see why it is not well with them in ministry in life because they do not understand the power of honor yesterday our media here were not giving us the best of presentation and i challenged them in love yesterday only god knows all those who sat down together now in unity look what they have produced today within 24 hours can i tell you this servants of the living god here in the east of the niger it's time to keep all this petty jealousy fighting unhealthy comparison who has the largest church members who has the largest who has the greatest anointing who knows this one who has traveled abroad for international ministry let me tell you the truth i must submit to you let's not confuse it we are not the same that is a revelation we must humbly admit we are not the same however no matter how high god has lifted anybody we must be able to hold hands don't all these cliques that is based on we who have prophecy we who have money we who have revelation we who have gone abroad one day you will meet the person you are despising and he will be the person holding the key that opens the door for you someone shout unity shout it again say unity you may be sitting by someone's side right now and just because the person is looking like a poor person you don't know that the job you applied the child of that man who owns the company is the one sitting at your side just because you come to church and you see people humble and sitting down does not mean everybody is suffering
there are many people they say turn to your neighbor and say god bless you and you turn and you look at your neighbor looking like and you feel it's an insult i don't even know why i'm sitting here and god says foolish person i put you to sit down here i ask the ushers to lead you here because this is the answer to your prayer i'm not being hard on you as from a standpoint of sarcasm it is so that you will learn you've heard me say i am a product of many anointings forget that you see bishop and the fathers here honoring me i'm not stupid to know that these are fathers i must be able to communicate that honor too not to stand and say ah they acknowledge this is why many young people don't last long can i tell you this anytime anybody honors you you are not done until you reciprocate it don't be the one getting honor from everywhere acknowledge me and you are not coming and you must communicate it to match the gravity of what was given to you if i appreciate every one of these men of god and i tell them i love you sirs i appreciate you sincerely oh apostle you are a great man i love you sir oh i didn't even realize it was you blessings apostle god bless you we're together in abuja a few days uh, maybe about a week or so ago are we learning something don't turn and look at a man of god and say how many members do you have um 200, 200. My, my friend we're talking about people who are doing something serious here and you are even coming let's be careful the person you drive today or you have your prayer group some of you already have your prayer group and you are already forming some of these ungodly cliques push can you prophesy no move this way you can you have a no 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 move this way do you have money i mean serious i'm not talking of uh, money to buy shoe and bag do you have serious financial resources listen servants of the living god some of us have made these mistakes some of these wealthy individuals today we had a chance to be close to them when they were not in we pushed them looking for those who had it at that time now someone else came and grew with the people who are millionaires today and you are now calling them and say i knew you they say i knew you too what did you do when you saw me that way don't come and tell me to bless you when you ignored me it is the person who stands by you to help you rise that is the person you stand by to support sit down are we learning can i tell you this i made up my mind that's why you see sometimes as a man of god there are younger ministries who send me text messages apostle where a prayer group of five seven people were just there and sometimes they think that i may not respond to them sometimes they come around for our meetings and i see them just young people seven eight you think i'll just say all these boys sometimes i can sit down with them to say gentlemen let me tell you i believe in where god is taking you wow we are standing with apostle is apostle god am i not a man listen you can do it you can make it where you are now it may look like you are small and sometimes you see them crying that encouragement a few years down the line you will hear that those people are on fire somewhere and they will still honor you because you showed them mutual honor when you fight somebody and the person still succeeds you are in trouble sit down you want to see the church in enugu rise young people don't see the fathers and make a mistake of dishonoring them just because you flew first class come down from your first class push your designer bags get on your knees and say daddy i'm just coming from the u.s but i'm not stupid i know you are here let the world see me while i honor you and the father will bless you 
and ask you stand up you're a great man may you go far that one statement already opens the door for the next level of your life fathers while god is helping us and lifting us do not laugh at the young minister in your church who is writing songs that look off key don't look down at that young lady she's working while schooling that is a billionaire in progress are you willing to honor them can i tell you this you will never truly be able to criticize someone who honors you so much and you honor them back where will it come from most times there is the instincts in men to feel fulfilled one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress when you downplay people's sacrifice can i tell you this i know we are different in revelation i know we are different as far as the dimensions of god revealed to us is concerned but i want you to know that every man who genuinely names the name of christ and loves him is doing his best with the information he knows to do you must be careful there are people making mistakes i agree there are people in ignorance i agree but let's be careful as we point fingers at people especially in this end time some of the most unusual men will be carrying mantles in these end times that will make some of us bend our head in shame forever we must be careful enugu united you stand but divided you fall a politician can come out for election and fail woefully and you see him and laugh at him and put your hand on your head till you fall down he's watching you that's your governor you just laughed at the day he becomes a governor he will look for where your church is and he will say they have a mad road there <laughs> why These are the wisdom keys that many people do not pay attention to. I hope you are not just laughing. You are getting what I'm telling you. Praise the name of the Lord. Mutual honor. When I learned this, I never go to a place and I never go to a territory and dishonor the people there. If you give me the privilege of climbing your pulpit there are times you see me challenging things and i'm hard on people but i must always let you know that it's from a standpoint of love and not sarcasm you will never hear me talking about any man of god to criticize i will challenge wrong doctrines i will challenge wrong things but it is not a ministry god gave me to point fingers at people no you will never see me climb if I climb on this pulpit and the rule of that church is no moving around the pulpit this is where I'm going to stay till I finish preaching it will not stop the people from hearing what they're saying it will not stop fire from falling fire can fall while standing here listen adaptation is proof of honor you must learn to have a high level of adaptability many of you wonder why you see me preach across different denominations that have different doctrinal divides i have my core beliefs i have my core spiritual values but i'm able to be flexible enough as this man is playing keyboard for me please stop for a moment there are churches you don't play this while the sound is on when you go there don't say my own i know how i charge my atmosphere have different networks in the spirit so that you know how to commit to connect to mtn airtel <laughs> sit down please i have to pray i don't want to keep us here for too long are we learning something tonight <laughs> hear me there are places don't feel bad please there are churches you go to teach maybe their ethics and their rule is that you either are in corporate or suit honor them don't go and say me i know what the day jesus appeared to me i was wearing a track suit i agree with you i'm not fighting your revelation but can you can you have that adaptation are you hearing what i'm saying now 
listen if we do not practice mutual honor i promise you this conference will only come and go and every other thing will continue that way but for mutual honor mutual honor if the protocol are doing a nice job don't look at them and say do your work well done sir god bless you and they feel encouraged let somebody try to touch you and you see what they will do because you have honored them a man of god comes and sows a seed of 10 million don't send him a text and say thanks god bless you abba 10 million is much now have some time to honor the person and say look we appreciate this all blessings come from god but we realize that you have done this as a communication of love and honor for this building and i'm the pastor i feel it as a responsibility to come and say thank you or you write a letter and the man says because of what you have done this is only the first phase <laughs> let me tell you this honor prolongs benevolence anywhere you show honor the benevolence has been given the strength for continuity is god speaking to us tonight again someone shout honor, honor. now aside from the men of god don't go there all of you i want you to stand and in one minute walk up to someone and just appreciate the person and tell the person i truly honor you it doesn't matter whether you know the person or not don't come and waylay the man of god don't please don't come and waylay the man of god go ahead you are appreciating the next apostle some of you you are appreciating your wife I honor the grace of God upon your life. I may not know you. Don't look for the people you know or your church members. I didn't say to go to your church members. I honor you. Yes, I know you're a man of God. We fought last year, but it's over. It's over it's over we are all servants of god it's the same heaven we are going to please return back to your seat rejoicing lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace the walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments Oh, look what is happening to the ministers. My goodness. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. Regardless denomination. Enugu. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching on. Sing it one more time with revelation. Let the devil hear you know. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Hear me anybody that comes into your city to cause division show him the gate of the city and tell him not in any good state carry your trouble and leave this city there is a lot that god is doing no 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 please don't go to the man of god the unity is all right we've we've we've, we've greeted one another just please go back so that we don't have chaos we are going to pray god sees your heart god will honor you man of god and bless you in the name of jesus are we together that a time will come when a particular church is holding a crusade and a pastor that is not even related will pay for 30 buses and say transport people to and fro if they ask you say a fellow co-laborer has come to partner what is the name of the church is not necessary just know that we want jesus to be lifted
are we together now the truth is that hear me we will define doctrine we will define modus operandi anybody who does not name the name of jesus and anybody who does not represent jesus is not part of those i'm talking about i have to balance this we are talking about those who fundamentally agree that there is one lord one faith one baptism there are certain beliefs that we may define no worry it's not too much of a reason to cause division enugu the greatest strength that will come will come from a united force if somebody comes and says i am a herbalist i must destroy this church suddenly you will hear voices from every altar what did you say and he said no 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 i was just talking about one person he said no there is no one person in enugu we are a united team you want to attack one man of god you will have to destroy all of us and the devil lets you go no man can come into the house of a strong man and spoil that man enugu it is not the charms that the habalists are making that's not what is stopping the progress of the church it is not the divinations and incantations it is that the strong men have been bound i'm here to lose them to lose them can i tell you this provided a family is still fighting one another this our firstborn is a millionaire he will not listen to us as if they are the ones who gave him the money they have refused to acknowledge that it was through diligence god blessed him and they become entitled you must bless us and he says continue your nonsense there the day that family decides to be united forgive one another sir we respect you you came out of this family and today god has blessed you we don't trivialize you and he now looks and says even though i am lifted i am still your brother you see that unity they will now turn and say where is the power that does not want this family to move and the devil has to listen because everybody is saying the same thing the moment you are saying something else the devil has cheated you one voice the reason why many terrorists prevail over several parts of africa and even our nation is because largely they have one voice if the voice is destruction they remain there if the voice is mayhem they remain there tonight god has come to shake the church in enugu and east of the niger to say it is no longer just about catholic and anglican and presbyterian and any other church together we are a united force yes i know you may not pray in tongues like me but don't worry it's too small a reason we are still lifting jesus high i know that you may not do this but and the devil says what happened now how do we destroy enugu how do we and you will begin to see such a rise of prosperity and wisdom and increase and power the moment you see a man of god crying you don't need to ask him what denomination you are a servant of the living god why are you crying ministry i'm tired i'm about to give up and he said not when i'm here you are not giving up when i'm here is it not rent how much is it look let's rally around i know that you were careless you made mistakes with your finances but god can restore but that shame it is not the devil who will laugh at the church come let us cover this shame and when that is done we can now teach you how to do it right can i tell you this many of you need to return back let me give you let me challenge you go back and put a hashtag united enugu together we stand from this conference let your family members know this is not a political thing oh. let me give a disclaimer now so that you don't say apostle came to do politics i'm a man of god i'm encouraging unity call your brother and say my friend you've been in london for 10 years you have refused to come and see us it's all right 
we came here and we had a message there is a dimension of grace god is giving you that this family needs we need you back There are dimensions that we may never experience. There is a grace God has given this man. There is a grace God has given this man. There is a grace God has given this church. There is a grace God has given this one. For this church, God gave them the grace for prayer. For this grace, God, God gave them the, the, the grace for consecration and holiness and purity. When you find out that the flesh is growing, one salmon one salmon from that ministry will damage the flesh permanently there are others god has given them the grace for wealth and prosperity there are others god has given them the grace for leadership excellence and administration when you come together you will become a balanced individual prosperous holy anointed with the spirit of revelation with doctrinal soundness having character having prosperity having maturity having influence having excellence that is god's church the body of christ <laughs> hallelujah so when they tell you someone is sick and is about to die you know you don't have the healing anointing yet there's no need sitting down there and letting the person die because of ego like doctors recommending themselves you can say there is a man of god i know in Enugu. there is grace on his life man of god can you help me one of my members is about to die and he will stand in that office and say you have provoked that office we will not lose one in the body in the name of jesus christ when that man is healed and you want the healing anointing you can meet him and say talk to me god has granted you such a grace i need this grace on my altar and he says look I had a revelation but i studied scripture this is what i did this do and you will see what i saw the church has increased you are not having increase people come to your church receive miracles and go and there is someone god is increasing don't just say he's using charms and criticize him humble yourself man of god there is grace upon your life and he says look manage some of these excesses you are doing in church all this jumping up and down settle down teach the people doctrine create an atmosphere that can allow responsible people come to your church now you have helped that person because he that told the person was just anointed but childish no immature no maturity no soundness of doctrine no coordination no excellence no leadership now you have introduced these missing dimensions members can now come and begin to stay because they have a pastor that reflects maturity that they can be members in that church you are a man of god you are doing well but you are always struggling financially you notice your members are also struggling financially don't start creating a theology out of your pain and say don't worry money does not matter you are failing in that area just admit it and find one who god has helped and granted grace it's amazing that what is a mountain to you someone near you already has the grace to turn it to a valley if only you can be humble to receive you had reverend dan's testimony and his dear wife 13 years trusting god for the fruit of the womb he would have remained like that till jesus would come or he would have written a book that don't the era of miracles are over but there is always a grace within reach today there are parents with twins wonderful bubbling children serving the lord now please look at me we're about to pray I apologize i know my time is gone right where you are standing whose grace have you dishonored within your land that God has sent to be for your lifting your prayer life has gone down whereas there is a man of God seated here with the grace for prayer there are prayer groups here that you can encounter the grace for prayer and damage spiritual laziness once and for all have you ignored that grace I told you I will give you three keys for unity one is love Two is mutual honor the third is forbearance what is forbearance accommodate weaknesses and limitations accommodate perspectives that are 
that are different from what you know it does not have to be what you believe for you to receive people no if it is not the way my church does it i don't believe it that is an error there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism forbearance is the ability to be accommodating yes i know in your church you may have ac very beautiful line arrays but maybe this ministry you have come they may not have all of those things do you have the flexibility to still forbear forbearance is powerful i go to minister in many places and i have i'm generally a conservative person i'm not jumping 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 but i go for meetings and sometimes you see people jump and laugh and they're happy and they run up and down sometimes they even fly on one another like they're fighting wrestling forbearance the most important thing is to communicate christ i may not do that in my own ministry but you must be flexible is that true yes you must learn to forbear just because it is not the way you know it to be does not mean god is not there you must have the flexibility there is a way you pray the day you go somewhere and you find out that prayer is not done that way don't be too quick to conclude have a heart that accommodates this is the key to unity i'm connected to a lot of men of god people in ministry across the globe and sometimes for some of these people we have very differing perspectives in many things but it's not enough reason some believe in deliverance and only deliverance some don't, don't mention the word deliverance some don't believe it does it's not enough reason to fight we are not a political party here you can still hug yourselves and when the person says, ah, I'm seeing a demon somewhere, and you don't believe in that, don't just turn and say, you have come with this, your rubbish. Forbear, forbear, forbear. Are you learning something tonight? Forbear. Forbear. Tolerate. Some of you have siblings who are talkatives. When they greet you before, they say, how is mommy and dad is already one hour? and you are a quiet disciplined calculated and intentional individual you can get very wary and say how, how do you ever succeed making noise like this no no you must have a large heart that accommodates there are men of god who will stand on the pulpit and like our father baba deboe they may be quiet somebody shout hallelujah somebody do this but there are others when they stand on that pulpit you'll be praying that the pulpit should not even fall it does not mean god is not working with them no just because you are used to it being a certain way does not mean it is the only way you must have forbearance hallelujah so if you go to a church if you don't like the dance group that is dancing just forbear it's only 10 minutes they have it's not enough to destroy your faith allow them finish dancing and go and sit down oh you don't like the choreography no problem just forbear then the children now come in with their special number they will make mistakes their heart will fall they will fight one and just forbear allow the children be featured too don't sit down and be too mature and say what is this i came for i just came out of a retreat i know nobody is doubting your call but let the children also serve jesus hallelujah and you may go to a church and find maybe is their thanksgiving and people are dancing they will take three steps forward and move back and move back and take just for beer don't sit down and say look at how they are these people are carnal no you are the one who is carnal they are celebrating god the way they know you must forbear hallelujah listen we're about to pray i'm not wasting your time don't go around insulting pastors don't go around insulting members don't go around comparing pastors members sometimes are the ones who join the heads of men of god saul killed one thousand
David killed 10,000. When Saul hears, what do you think he will do? Oh, Apostle Joshua Selman came to town. Come and see what happened. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We do not have the ministry of outshining or the ministry of demeaning. We are only contributors to lift up the hands of the servants of God in the land to the end that Jesus be revealed and Jesus be glorified. I am not in any way in the flesh better than any of these veterans of the gospel you see. What you see happen is an election of grace and the privilege that God has given. I must be wise enough to know that even though they honor me, it is not to mean they are demeaning their own anointing. Are we together now? Don't come and thank God for you sowing seeds to my life. But make sure you also do it to your pastor too. Don't go around blessing other people and leave the primary person that God is using to feed you. It's hypocrisy. Love. Mutual honor. Husband. Go back home and meet your wife and say wife i don't want to take it for granted that every week you cook for me don't say i paid your dowry that some of those statements are demonic statements it's not a christian statement thank you thank you for having the discipline in the rain and in sunshine and then you wife when they are appreciating you like that don't just say a hand uh -uh. only a wise husband can produce such a wise wife you, you see that now you are balancing the equation now and the devil that wants to cause trouble in that marriage now is the one who is left for shame and children parents pay your school fees they labor to help you don't come and say i didn't ask you to could you to you know to to uh, what they call it i didn't ask you to bring me here that's that's not a wise. that's a childish statement daddy thank you it was in my presence i saw people did not write exams some their final year exams but thank you for always granting me that school fees today i may graduate and i have come to honor you thank you sir honor are we together somebody comes and does something nice for the city don't sit down and say let them not do it now no thank you sir for being thoughtful enough we have been suffering lack of water here you came and now brought borehole don't say instead of him to even make it electronic he now made it at least he tried you see there is a spirit we have in africa that i'm praying the spirit of of dishonor and ingratitude if somebody brings a bag of rice even if it's a small bag thank god that he was thoughtful enough to bring it don't say at his level look at what he, he, he should come and carry this nonsense out of this don't think like that can i tell you this till when people bless me whether it's 100 naira whether it's 50 naira it is with the same passion of gratitude i receive if you like bring one billion you bring one naira i am grateful to all of them more than what they gave is the heart that can isolate you to honor you this much are we together now are you ready to pray these are the keys that I have learned go back to your church and teach your workers heads of department don't fight yourself ordain workers don't fight yourself this evil man God will punish him for us in this department and you are serving there you will not receive the blessing that comes let me tell you this men will offend you men are limited but you must sustain the grace today i am able to dispense the anointing with this degree of results because i am a product of many anointings when i came i sat down sorry to have to say it you saw me talking to our father before i came up i held his hands i said daddy i honor you and our mommy and i sincerely appreciate you thank you sir that's what i was saying we were in enugu we were in insuka just a few days ago reverend vindiolu was there our father the bishop at his age drove down to insuka and i said ah this man at this age he came with our mother this morning 
she's still here tonight several of these people you see only god knows the conferences and the programs that they shut down to be here how dare you dishonor them because you are appreciating joshua selman how many of me can change this city by myself i'm only here for this night and i'm gone but these are the ones who remain lifting up the name of jesus in the east of the niger never honor me at the detriment of these graces listen prayer groups your little leaders that god I, god is helping don't despise them love them and respect them that gentleman you see shouting and sweating under a tree there is a grace upon him don't honor the man of god and ignore the protocol you see how long these gentlemen have been standing they have been standing even while you are sitting down if this is a night vigil this is how they will stand don't dishonor them what of those who were about cooking for us one of our mothers here has been doing <laughs> the sacrifice that this woman of god has been making she also came for the meeting but the sacrifice how dare you dishonor them what of those who have been driving me around since i came some of these security guys they are driving the cars you see them running up and down what of this cameraman this gentleman has been walking up and down like as if he doesn't have what to do snapping people up and down whereas he too wants to receive you must honor everyone without the person who sets the stage the sermon can be effective without the person who fix the mic our media people are somewhere there when i was lashing them yesterday you were laughing at them but those guys deserve honor because if this screen is shut down what of you who left your house and came some of you since afternoon you were here no matter how listen listen no matter how anointed we are if you are not here we are not in ministry it's an uncomfortable truth but it is the truth in the multitude of men is a king's honor if you have a vision without men the vision will still perish please rise up on your feet for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. One more time. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. Once you are standing, I like you to pray for the unity of the church in Enugu. Lift your voice and pray. Father, bind us together in love. Every church, mention the name of any church you know. Mention the name of any man of God you know. Lord, let us shelve away every prejudice. Mention the name of every ministry. Regardless denominational barriers, we make up our minds that this is the season of unity it doesn't matter what assembly you identify with locally speaking united we stand divided we fall united we stand divided we fall Enugu united you stand are you praying divided you fall east of the Niger united you stand divided you fall that they may be one as we are one that the preachers may be one as we are one having a sense of love one towards another genuine 
heartfelt sincere love having a sense of mutual honor one towards another beyond results beyond achievements having a sense of forbearance one towards another hallelujah now there are three things i'm going to do very quickly our time is up we've had moments where we've prayed number one is i'm going to minister healing and deliverance in the next maybe two to three minutes just speak over those who are sick in body and those who have been oppressed number two i'm going to prophesy and speak prophetically over lives that these doors and these gates be opened number three i'm going to repeat what we did last year again i will ask our father the bishop and our mother when it is time alongside maybe a few pastors that will be selected to come and stand upon this altar representing the church over Enugu and the east of the niger and they will stand and blow a shofar and announce a new season of strength of power of revival of transformation and of growth are we ready for that pray in one minute every burden that i came here with must leave now lift your voice and pray everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be restored unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be restored unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me hallelujah hallelujah now i want to rebuke every spirit and every power that is not of the christ sitting over the destinies of men now we are united force away with offense away with bitterness from yesterday and today there have been massive outpourings of the spirit i want to pray now very quickly father in the name that is above all names over enugu state over the east of the niger i come by the power of the holy spirit and i declare that every spirit sitting upon the glory and the destinies of man I decree and declare right now at the count of three as you shout the name Jesus those powers and those forces are dislodged I want you to bring them out one my God two three shout Jesus I command those powers release destinies now release every destiny under captivity help them please I cause those destinies in the name of jesus christ i declare right now fire from heaven every altar that will not release you and let you go we set it on fire now we set it on fire now bring them out i'm still praying the lord is showing me what looks like stones I'm seeing like three stones and I'm seeing it with the pictures of men on it. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is saying, set it on fire. I don't know whose destiny has been caged by the orchestrations of witchcraft. But right now at the count of three, as you shout the name of Jesus, may fire burn those altars. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. I give 
see the church falling. Yeah. I see the church falling. I see the church falling. Shut the gates, cut the nets, hold the bars. I hear the chains, I hear the chains, I hear the chains. Hey! I the chains Hallelujah. Now, I want to attack the spirit of delay. Hear me. As I pray this prayer, the power of God will come on many people. They will start running for some of them. As I declare speed. Father, in the name of Jesus, every destiny that has been kept down by the power that raised Christ from the dead at the count of three let the yoke and altar of delay one two three take speed in your life speed in your life speed in your life i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit i cause delay i cause delay i cause delay I cause delay, delay in achievement, delay in ministry. I rebuke you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Who is Okechuku? Okechuku, I'm hearing the name like Okechuku. We don't have the time. Okechuku, you are wearing, there are two of you, you are one. The other person is wearing yellow. Okay, Chuku. This is what I'm seeing in a vision. There is an okay Chuku wearing a yellow dress. Is there someone like that? Oh dear. What's your name? Come, stand. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God is going to come on one of you right now. A strong anointing destroying every yoke that is not of God let it fall upon you now in the name of Jesus this door that I see close for Okechuku I declare it open right now open right now Help them open right now. Hallelujah. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I'm hearing a name, Elizabeth. There's someone with that name. We have to hurry up. We shouldn't stay. Ah, mommy. Elizabeth. A new chapter is opening for Elizabeth. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Elizabeth there is a woman here you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb five years five years one two three four five please who is that oh dear I wish we had time but we have to hurry up five years who is that person please very quickly let me know when that person is here because the season of that person has come in the name of Jesus Christ Elizabeth by the power that raised Christ from the dead I decree and declare right now that everything that is stopping the opening of a new season this lady going back this tap that lady for me lift your hands where you are I'm seeing oil coming on your head I don't know you but in the name of Jesus even though I'm praying for these people the Lord is saying I should announce to you that a new season is opening for your life and your destiny a new season is opening for your life and destiny in the name of Jesus Christ father I declare my God I just saw like fire moving from my left to my right over Elizabeth fire 
may that grace come upon you now in the name of jesus let it bring to end every season and open you up to a new one i declare this by the spirit of god in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah i prayed a prayer in the morning and i'm seeing that thing happen again the lord is ministering to me that there are a number of ministers here you have struggled at a particular level of grace but god wants to multiply his hand upon your life i don't know where they are but i stretch my hands i'm seeing the number eight fire is coming on eight people among the ministers here father at the count of three may that grace rest on them one my god two three take that fire take that fire help this woman please take that fire please help that woman in the name of jesus take that fire new level in your ministry new level some of you i'm seeing you climb ladders you are climbing ladders in the spirit it's a symbol of a new season step into that new season of glory in the name of jesus christ let me pray for the sick now please lay your hands five years the holy spirit is still speaking to me trusting god for the fruit of the womb who is that is there someone like that all of you all of you i want to pray for you please just lay your hand on your stomach as a point a prophetic point of contact just let them be that's all right my friend shout jesus as loud as you can help him take that grace you will never be the same again in the name of jesus christ right now in the name of jesus please believe that there is a grace that can open the, the door of a womb it doesn't matter the medical report just release your faith in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god every power that is why am i seeing fire just rising from the altar here in the name of jesus everything that has stopped fruitfulness help that lady in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ and anything that wants to destroy your child fruitfulness fire from heaven is coming upon you right now i open this womb now in jesus name according to the time of life i declare return with your miracle children now return with your miracle children return with your miracle children in the name of jesus madam i'm seeing something that looks like fire on your stomach i don't know why fire is burning on your stomach but in the name of jesus christ whether it's for yourself or someone you're standing for let there be a miracle right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ please lay your hands let's pray for the sick we have to wrap up father i pray right now for everyone who is trusting god for a miracle in their health just help the lady that shouts now under the anointing don't bring her out but just help her so she does not injure herself i just saw a vision and i heard that sound we are praying for the sick now in the name that is above all names agree with me as i pray in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ wow i've not even begun the prayer i'm seeing the lord taking away lump in the breast breast lump it's going now by the power of the holy spirit now i rebuke every devil that is back of any infirmity in the name of jesus be delivered right now i command that spirit 
let God's people go now in Jesus name I bring you life and I bring you healing be healed right now in Jesus name be healed right now in Jesus name blind eyes be opened now in the name of Jesus deaf ears be opened now in the name of Jesus all bone conditions be healed now in the name of Jesus blood conditions be healed now in the name of Jesus heart palpitations system and organ failure be restored now in the name of Jesus every uri urinary problem I'm seeing the Lord heal a urinary problem in the name of Jesus be healed right now someone you have difficulty breathing this has been even before COVID so this is not about COVID you have difficulty breathing sometimes you feel as if you are choking the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ any genotype here that needs to change we change you by the power of the Holy Spirit every damaged organ liver kidney heart be restored now every infection in your body I declare healing for you right now if there is anyone here appointed unto death that the devil has planned that you will not see the end of this year in the name of Jesus I command death to leave your habitation now I command death to leave your habitation now I'm holding my stomach because there is someone here having severe pain rambling around your stomach month in month out this continues to happen the power of God is touching you right now the power of Jesus is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ any medical report here that is a death sentence cancer HIV hepatitis of all sorts in the name of Jesus be healed right now please believe it be healed right now there's someone you have severe swelling severe swelling around your feet in the name of Jesus I command that swelling to go down now now every other case whether I mentioned it or not in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God be healed right now be restored right now in the name of Jesus Christ now please let me have your attention very quickly I want to invite I don't know the people who we're going to invite but okay there is a list okay can you call the list very quickly as he calls it please just celebrate them as they come because we are going to make declarations over the east of the Niger and over Enugu state we are going to be declaring by the spirit that the gates will open please make sure you participate yes sir our papa bishop Obion please Obion. celebrate bishop as he comes our father our papa bishop jonathan anos here please celebrate them as they come let's celebrate the fathers our papa reverend edwin Bayebo. are you celebrating them our papa reverend akoma please celebrate these ones as they come our mama bishop help bishop. the Bogos wife someone help our mother as she comes up please are you celebrating grace mm. listen let me tell you this even in heaven around the throne there are 24 elders the eldership is mandated with the grace 
that can stand and speak over a territory and make declarations even over territories and declare that these territories be opened hallelujah and i'm going to pass the mic we'll start from um our, our, our pastor our bishop and then right to our father to end now it does not mean that they are the only servants of god it's just a, a representation but what i want you to do please as they make declarations enugu state east of the niger open up your spirit we are announcing prophetically to principalities and powers that a new season is opened by the spirit of god are we in agreement on this i know you have been standing but this is the final phase except for health reasons may i encourage you to please stand in honor to these fathers father in the name of jesus the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west tonight we declare the rising of a new wave of revival in the name of jesus we declare the rising of peace in eastern nigeria in the name of jesus we declare an end of terrorism an end of criminality an end of every manner of bloodshed in eastern nigeria in the name of jesus we declare that the power of the holy spirit will sweep across the eastern part of nigeria with a new wave of revival in the mighty name of jesus father will declare in the place of agitation let there be revival let there be prosperity let there be abundance let there be peace let there be fairness let there be justice let there be equity let there be empowerment let the youth receive jobs let there be soundness of heart and of mind in the name of jesus we declare no more deaths no more kidnapping no more terrorism no more ritual killings in eastern nigeria in the name of jesus and finally we declare let the church in the east arise arise like the sun that is set on the east let the sun let the, let the sun arise let the church of god arise with a new mantle that will spread across the rest of the nation in jesus mighty name we pray father we speak oh god and the entire east for the unity of the body of christ lord we declare a mighty wave of your glory upon the churches in the mighty name of jesus lord we pray for the government in the southeast we rebuke the spirit of division and we decree a powerful unity among the governors in the mighty name of jesus lord we declare an open heaven oh god in the entire southeast in the mighty name of jesus oh father we speak oh god that the powers of destruction the powers of bloodshed will cease in the mighty name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus powerful name we pray mighty and everlasting father we thank you at this moment for the restoration of the voice and the position of the church in nigeria we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory and i decree and i declare even now that the north will listen the south will listen east and west will submit to the authority of your name in the name of jesus christ we decree and declare an open door for your name to be glorified in this land father we commit southeast in your hand that you begin a revival that life cannot annul in the name of jesus christ thank you for what you began doing you will finish in righteousness in jesus name in jesus name
In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for unity. Let there be unity, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let there be unity among Christendom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let there be love among us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us forgive one another in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray against uh, uh, there will be no kidnapping in the name of Jesus. No husband will operate in Israel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We cover our nation with the blood of Jesus. We cover Southeast with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Enugu Ayi weba wena se ni sinjera bara gakasema Ayi meje ozo nwike Ayi meje ozo amoro nwa Ayi akabwe Accident in an also in Jesus' name. Did in an Azofia, Unugan went to lose it at Tagaba. Did a jolo, who's awful, a merry woman. I ne kune kusike, who's in a koraka, the mayor again. Okay, mayor again. Okay, Melegi. Anye kwa korita godika. Oru kwa inwa konye. Obinigwe. Oru inwa kaizite. Oku nine okuleba. Anye anali anaha Jesus. Ubuda in South East. Adiko manaha Jesus. Ife ifun. Ife ifun nine. Anako naha Jesus. Oba koni ne eben sobude oba kogi eben sobude ebeni na julugo ina ha Jesus ndine Josi ndine Josi ndine Josi iki kereze panata akusiguna balia unu kusi emeni koga di kwama o aine kuli roko naga aine kuli naga. Na aye gade ezinu no gane mo ngukwe amen. Eh ndi olu di chiche ndi olu di chiche ndi government ndi ozondia aga na kufu go from anaha Jesus. Anye kuge na kai kungo nyozo kai kungo nyozo ebe ni ni si mweta. Neme ele Nele Oga na ganiru Omo mwanyi kwa wala fya nozo Aga ni gufa Oga na ganiru Ndi chiego Achiego Na lo contract Uza eme perugu Anye eme bie Ajo afa Nke sat isi me Ndi na ambago na na neba na internet wena wotala ya jafa. Tell them repent in the name of Jesus. If ama if ama gane me no boda in South East. Abu ni kwenyele tizi amen kale se amen ni ne. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels. <laughs> Hallelujah. One thing I know is that everything that He has declared, we stamp and we say amen to it. Therefore, joining my faith with our fathers here, alongside the servants of God here, alongside the church, we stand and we declare gates of Enugu. Hear the word of the Lord. 
we decree and declare tonight be open now be open now be open for the advancement of the gospel be open for the prosperity of the citizens be open for increase be open for godliness be open for excellence we pray for every church on this ground and within this region regardless the denomination may fire burn upon every altar and i stand here in partnership with our fathers if there is any altar that has been erected in this region and it is not in the name of the christ all earth we speak to you fight every altar that is not of god we speak by the apostolic and the prophetic every shrine every incantation everything that is not consistent with the character of christ i command every altar may the earth fight and nullify them in the name of jesus christ and we declare that by this time next year let it be that enugu state and even the east of the niger let it be for you from glory to glory revival to revival power to power prosperity to prosperity increase to increase in the name of jesus christ we seal this prophetic prayer tonight in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy ghost god bless you sirs let's honor our father now hear me hold on please hold on before we wrap up this conference my session here we are going to shout seven hallelujah listen hallelujah means halal yeshua it means praise the lord are we together now it's not a blind shout this is the final shout that will bring every wall of jericho down and then bring unity and bring strength that everything we have discussed here i'm going to be doing the counting and you will be shouting are you ready seven hallelujah but let me say this in advance thank you southeast i love you from the depth of my heart from the very depth of my heart bishop reverend daniel and every one servant of god who has helped to make our stay and every time we come comfortable i truly love and honor you sincerely and it is my prayer that together as co-laborers we will continue to present everyone complete in christ in the name of jesus are you ready to shout hallelujah eh? hallelujah oh Hallelujah, hey. it's the shout of victory. Hallelujah, hey. Hallelujah, oh. Let the shout of rejoicing fill the night. Hallelujah, hey. When I count the number, you give a loud shout. That that shout is Tehila. It's a shout oh, that no. is bringing every mountain. Yes, Are you ready? Seven Hallelujah. Number one. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Number two. Hallelujah. Number three! Hallelujah! Hey! Number four! Hallelujah! Number five! Hallelujah! Number six! Hallelujah! 
this final shout anything that could not stop you from shouting six times it will never have the power to stop you the seventh time are you ready southeast number seven Engage in strategic prayer. Listen, the seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. They are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime because you are in a season. Your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night, you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. You have your prayer time in the morning. You have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report. Your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. Let him pray. Not let him discuss. Not let him grumble around. Not let him call God names and say I will backslide. Let him pray. Psalm 34 please from verse 4 to 7 and then the last part and we will pray psalm 34 i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from what all my fears next verse we are reading to four to seven they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed six the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of how many all his troubles last verse the angel of the lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked i am not understanding what is happening i set myself like daniel onto prayer god grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow anytime many believers now fast as a ceremony three days fasting you carry it on your head as if you as if it's, it's 12 years fasting if you love food more than your destiny life will cheat you again and again food is okay oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it there are many of you here you cannot remember i may be wrong i'm not saying you should do it please i'm not saying you should do it but as far as i'm concerned there are spiritual levels that if you get to a week should never pass that you did not fast you are joking you are joking not with what you are doing to hell you are joking seven days ah no himarama 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 
Listen, let me tell you this. I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise. Real men of power contact power when men sleep. may god give you the grace to rise above sleep i'm praying from the may god give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you that god can wake you up in the night no light off the light you are praying don't allow distractions you are praying the next thing you see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract off the light you can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. don't come on stage and talk nonsense lion of the tribe of judah rose of sharon lily of the valley rose of this and that and that god is not a scammer he's not a magician no track record in the secret place you will flatter yourself to nothing in it in the open please learn to pray in the night learn to pray in the night learn to pray in the night receive grace to dedicate night times and pray God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. Shakatos kaprandaske balakata. A time will come, you'll feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you're a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages. And there are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray it. You are receiving power. is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior don't joke with your destiny like that don't joke with your destiny like that the bible says to enter and shut the door behind you shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret you don't need to have a prayer point you don't need to have a prayer point just stay there and begin to pray and while you are praying your flesh is weak but your spirit is winning Can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire 
is an emblem of the spirit is one of the emblems of revival is one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place fire does not only refine fire is for judgment there are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch my brother and my sister if you pray from your heart some things will shift you will wake up in the morning and know i shifted this through prayer there are attacks that only prayer can challenge pray for me pray for me is wonderful but you must become the priest of your destiny can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes Salabakata. Shenakandas kama hasabash. Rakata pakato sopokoto sheke telekata. Emprata seneketo shalikata. Tasete shana haskabaratos. Rekete kete kete skabarakatos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray, pray, outside, pray. Two seats upon the white home. To the king, yes, upon the white home. Shela Bakata Rekotosia, Gimarama. To the king who sits on the throne, Kimarama. To the king who sits on the throne, Eshena Balala, Ele, 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 Ele. Ela barata katosha brada katela katosh, ekata brada toska ne kata brada na kata, haruse se ne katosha la toske mahasa. War to them who are ease in Zion. War to them who are ease in Zion. Who sits upon the white horse? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise you would have given up. 
he said peter satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when you are converted use the same strategy to strengthen strengthen prayer is a strengthener they that trust in the lord shall be as mount zion which cannot be moved but abided forever next verse as the mountains are around jerusalem so the lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever next verse for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity next verse do good O lord unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts we are reading till the last verse as for such as turn aside in their crooked ways the lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity but peace upon joshua selman prayer gives you stability in the next two three minutes you are going to pray and say lord let this prayer stabilize me i shouldn't be shaking over everything i should be able to laugh at certain storms and say jesus is lord lift your voice and pray stability power stamina the lord is my light and my salvation the lord is the strength of my life hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus shout it say in the name of Jesus tonight I stand on behalf of myself and my family and I declare that every altar that is speaking against my destiny I tear it down tonight. Lift your voice and pray. 
Two, two. Find, find a partner and hold a hand. Be serious, please. If the person by your side is not serious, leave him alone. We're doing serious business tonight. Find a partner and hold a hand. Shabakato labakaya. Embretekas katafraska labakuria dabashne. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every legal access I have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly tonight I invoke the blood let the blood speak lift your voice and begin to pray every legal access every legal access every legal access I have given any altar of darkness shall die even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I tear you down. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of stagnation. I speak against you. I speak against you. I curse you by the God of heaven. By the God of heaven. Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many 
miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Altars, altars. That are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny. Because of where I'm coming from. I prophesy tonight. Your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Altars. Associated territories. Associated with territories. I come against you. By the God of heaven. I come against you. Pray, pray. I come against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years, but it looked like it has not manifested because every time it's reaching you, an altar lifts up. We are going to call it back. Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy I call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the God of wonders authorize the God of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny restore relationships restore finances restore mandates restore ministries Pray, pray. Let your prayer be answered. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen. I don't care how many. Call it. Listen. You are going to call them one by one and say, I stand as an altar and I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out of this wasteful living. Call them. Call 
Haleluya Haleluya Say in the name of Jesus Be serious Say it again in the name of Jesus I speak to the east I speak to the west I speak to the north I speak to the south Everywhere my favor is In the name of Jesus I command it to my life now Lift your voice and pray You don't have to travel Call it everywhere it is you to pray listen i want you to pray and talk to god tell him lord i'm part of this apostolic family the altar you have erected here must speak for me i want my life to show it from today lift your voice and pray pray with understanding and watch what happens to you pray with understanding pray with understanding pray with understanding Lord, I inform the altar that you have with your servant. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Marketos Sotomo Sabada. Lambe Neketos Sotomo Sekedua. I declare it. Marketos Sotomo Sekedua. hallelujah many of you may not realize what is happening to you please i don't want you to idolize this teaching no it's not about religiosity it's about proper understanding and application so it's not just coming to lie down here that, no 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 the altar is a revelation we are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives listen because many of us here the only time you pray is when you are together with people satan started attacking you he gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life he will never attack it at once he can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace to pray I receive it right now lift your voice and begin to pray fire fresh fire on my altar fresh grace to pray fresh grace to fast fresh grace to intercede fresh grace for warfare i command every dead prayer life around my life 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and I will pray for you. There are many of us, the Spirit of God started revealing things to you because you were meeting with Him every day. But something happened, no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life. No access to illumination. You used to be, you used to have projects that you and God are on. You can literally say we are on a faith project. But now there's nothing like that. Your life has become stale and barren. Some of you is when you started ministry. This, this so-called thing called ministry. That's what destroyed you. We are going to pray a prayer of restoration. And the fire will fall upon you. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit. I ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life holy spirit i cry for intimacy afresh with you lift your voice and begin to pray intimacy spirit of the living god do not be far from me again pray pray let it not be that you are just a stranger we were closer than this and something happened lift your hands Jalakosia Kata I tell you there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies I pray for you now I'm praying for you in the name that is above all names everyone hearing me and standing here whether inside or outside you have prayed if there is any altar as i speak now that is speaking against your life at the count of three i command those altars to catch fire right now please get ready the power of god will come on people one two three i command those altars now be broken be broken be broken be broken i command those altars be broken be broken listen lift your hands i'm challenging altars of failure listen just i'm praying for you don't pray just listen to me because i'm seeing people here failure it has nothing to do with academics it makes you fail in everything i stretch my hands may that fire anyone here who is a victim that altar is speaking i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i judge those altars now 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 by fire i judge those altars now there are altars that cause men to see things and never handle it you see a job they tell you it's yours quarter to reception everything changes i don't know who belongs to that category but in the name of jesus inside and outside following online anyone who has been a victim of total failure and disappointment right now in the name of jesus 
that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus I command total deliverance help them help them please total deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ put down your hands ladies keep your hands lifted I will tell you why I'm praying for you there are many ladies let me tell you many people don't know why things don't work especially for ladies it's not because you are ladies and it's not because you are bad it's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit a lady is not just another human being who is not a man no it's more than that a lady is the chiefest point of entrance even among men that's why she has a womb the only lady who a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit it's not just a human being keep your hands lifted that's why demons look for them that's why spirits look for them that's why altars speak against them it may not be caused by you but i'm praying for you keep your hands lifted you may not understand what is happening lord jesus i'm praying now that any one of our sisters here whose family and destiny is under siege shakas I'm declaring anyone who made a covenant with the earth for your destiny, anyone who passed through fire to make a covenant with your destiny, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare upon every lady now be free in the name of Jesus, be free in the name of Jesus from those yokes, those yokes that cause fibroid, those yokes that cause fibroid, those yokes that cause lungs around your body, those lungs, those barrenness, I cause it by the God of heaven. I cause it by the God of heaven. hallelujah i'm seeing 11 ladies the lord is opening my eyes listen now i'm seeing rings on all their 10 fingers and this is a very serious demonic case and the lord wants to set them free now you will not know it is not something you know one of you used to see it physically you see rings on your hands in the name of jesus 11 people ladies especially i'm praying now some are inside some are outside doesn't matter where you are the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands Lord I pray whoever came into this meeting whether online or offline and belongs to that category in the name of Jesus as I'm praying now I command I'm praying now the fire will fall on certain people 11 in all I see Lord let it be right now I, I break that marriage I break that spiritual marriage I break that spiritual marriage, my God, my God, my God, my God. I break that spiritual marriage. There's one of them you should have married. But this is what stops everybody that comes around you. I command it broken right now. 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 Hallelujah. Our time is gone. The Lord is asking me to minister to someone here. Somebody comes to you in the night physically. I'm not talking of vision. Physically. You feel somebody lying down around your bed. Sometimes sleeping with you. You are feeling it. This is not guesswork. This is something you know is happening. Wherever that person is. Right now in Jesus name. I stretch my hands. There is no escape. In the name of Jesus, whether inside or outside, you are in this category now. I command judgment. Judgment on any strange spirit. Judgment on any stranger. Judgment on any stranger. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know but we're rounding up please just just be patient with me 
I'm hearing in my spirit Yoruba people. Yoruba people, there is there is something a deliverance that God is bringing now to Yoruba people. You know how God acts as I'm speaking now. Everyone associated with that territory, I place the word of God now in the name of Jesus. Let that sword of deliverance, I command that double-edged sword to locate everyone from the southwestern part now who is in need of territorial deliverance. I command it now, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus, no escape, no escape for any power of darkness. Every mark of disfavor that is on anyone's life here you watch what happens to your life from this meeting anyone carrying any mark of disfavor where men should bless you something about you becomes an irritation I command that mark to be erased from your life now I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I'm watching what is happening from the spirit realm, not the physical realm. When you see me keep praying, it's because God is doing something. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I say it again. I command that mysterious mark to be erased from your life right now. Anyone here who has any member of your family that has refused to give birth they have tried and tried and the devil would just not let them have a child either she will not take in completely or she would take in and then mysteriously lose the child or the man will not be able to get her pregnant i don't care what situation but please even if you are not the one standing for them i'm praying distance is no barrier i stretch my hands now and I decree by the altar of prayer we authorize angelic assistance to those people right now we authorize angelic assistance right now hear me it was an angel that came to assist Mary to get pregnant he showed up and said I was sent your own is to just agree and she said be it unto me and she got pregnant I declare and declare that any manifestation and encounter that they need to go through to have their child I command it to happen now in the name of Jesus let me pray finally for your finances I believe in God's people empowered there is no triumph when everything around your life is not working I want to speak because some of you are titers some of you are sowers some of you bless honor God's house but simply because of certain systems that manifestation can happen as laziness that manifestation can happen as disfavor everywhere in the name of Jesus I decree and declare nobody here is too young to prosper don't listen to that nonsense nobody here I'm not talking of business I'm not talking of a job 
I'm talking of a system in the spirit where God will lift you in a way that will make you afraid. I decree and declare now. As I'm praying for you, I'm also praying for families. Because there are families that need help as a matter of emergency. I pray that the demon sitting on the financial destiny of anyone here, sitting on the financial destiny of any family, I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Listen. I've shared with you my encounter. I've seen that spirit that they call Mammon. I've seen it. I've shared it here. Some years ago when I was praying and all of a sudden my ceiling disappeared and all of a sudden I saw a giant creature like him as tall as a mango tree standing looking like um like 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 a dinosaur a sea creature with a tail and the tail was another living thing on its own it could detach from that creature and move and the eyes were as big as a human head two red fierce eyes and he was looking at me and he said so you think you can bring god's people into blessings and that was the end of the encounter that was it was that day i knew that wealth is spiritual it's not about what you do it's about what is backing you you can do everything to a bow. there must be a spirit assisting you i call for the ministry of the holy spirit over your finances and i command extraordinary results from today i command strange results from today i command strange favors from today i command strange results from today strange encounters with destiny help us in the name of Jesus Christ.